Good evening, everybody, and welcome to another episode of The Legend of Heroes, Trails of Cold Steel 4. It's me, your host, Logic Blade, and we're back. After finishing up Act 2 in spectacular fashion, as you can see by our beautiful title screen here with uh, all of our protagonists. That's right, every single one of them. Nope, we're not missing anybody. They're all here. Estelle, Lloyd, Reen. Yep, nobody else. We're not we're not forgetting anybody. They're all they're all here. Okay, I, I think I'm done. That joke a bit too much. Anyway, um so yeah, we uh met up, uh met many different people on the Pantagirl. Obviously the Liberal team, the Crossbell team, uh everybody from Thor's was there. And uh the leaders of Remaferia, Liberal, and Calvard were all there too to discuss what should be their uh, countermeasures against Operation Jormungand, which is a full-scale defensive war to fight back against the Empire's invasion. 1.2 million soldiers on the Empire side versus 1.2 million on the side of everyone else. <laughs> Muse was definitely busy, and uh, from some shocking twists and turns, we were able to fight our way back, survive a uh, a raid from frickin' Ouroboros. It, crazy, there's crazy shit going on, and you know what? Let's just let's just keep going. Shit, shit, be wild, yo. Five days to Operation Jormungand. We're doing some more, uh, to and around. Except this time, we got a big fancy ship. Point defense missiles, one big ass main cannon. You know, all the good stuff. It's even bigger than the courageous one. And mints back. All our homies are back. We have an actual hangar for our sold outs. We don't have to have them fly around with us anymore. Seriously, we, we even have a bath. It's ridiculous. The games room is even uh, bigger and better than before. The training room's massive. The place is nuts. I want an airship. Today's beverage of choice is uh, H2O and Pepsi. Despite being a new model of ship, the system you see here largely emulates that of the previous Courageous. Our operations manual only covers the bare minimum. Should you find anything lacking, you'll have to figure it out as you go. Geez, thanks, Michael. Understood. I'll make sure to pass it on to everyone else. In total, it spans a length of 92 Arge considerable step up from the previous 74 arch class. However, because the ship is so much bigger, you'll need to carefully watch the speed and engine output. Ha! Huh. So she's a wild one, eh? Sounds to me like this girl's gonna need a bit more taming than the last one. This terminal should give you complete command over all the ship's facilities and fire control systems. Man, Peyton is, uh, really making his way up in the world. You always find him right when you need them. It comes equipped with anti-hacking measures, specially developed by Professors Albert and Erica Russell themselves. You know, 
Honestly, maybe maybe Mechanic Peyton is actually one of the Anguis of Ouroboros. You mean Mom and Grandpa made it? <laughs> we should have no problems then. Incredible. Every inch of equipment on this ship is state of the art. <laughs> I heard that. And that computer's one of the Epstein Foundation's next generation models. Weren't they only just developed? That's right. And its hull has the latest innovations in hydrodynamic engineering, courtesy of the Ruhr Institute of Technology. Plus, it seems to be outfitted with ZCF's newest next gen orbital engine, too. ZCF. It only gets more and more unbelievable every time I hear it. Just how did you manage to construct a cutting-edge ship like this abroad in total secrecy, without anyone finding out? Magic. As I stated earlier, there are a great deal of individuals who helped me make this happen. Such as Mr. Gwyn here, for instance. Oh, hi. I guess you're here too. Mm-hmm. The story here goes all the way back to right after the Civil War. Considering the way it ended, His Highness decided to approach me for some advice. He had me prepare this ship for him, all in anticipation of the day when the Crimson Wings would be torn from the sky. So that's why. Huh. I do remember His Highness mentioning something about you being his advisor. Still, for the construction site to be located on the Kingdom of Burrows Valeria Lakeshore. Now on top of an old Ouroboros secret base to boot? Talk about a plot twist. <laughs> You're referring to the research facility that the Faceless constructed during the incident in Liberal. I heard that after the dust settled, it was handed over to the ZCF to manage. It does seem like Grandpa and the others used it for some kind of research. So, not just Gwyn and Professor Schmidt pitched in, but Professor Russell and Her Majesty Alicia, too. Whereas Cassius and the Crown Princess were none the wiser. If you want to fool your enemies, you gotta fool your friends first, huh? Classic. As for funding, in addition to His Highness Olivert, uh, Gwyn and His Majesty Eugent also contributed from their personal holdings. But perhaps the most unexpected benefactors were Father and Marquis Rogner. Indeed. Quite a cunning play by those two. I imagine that keeping this from the Albareas was all in the name of avoiding the eyes of the Intelligence Division? Yes, the same with the Cayennes, right? And so, the Third Wing was complete, independent of the government and the Viceland Army. Of course, when I said we were preparing for our wings to be torn away, we only expected they would be commandeered by the government. To be perfectly frank, the thought that they would be physically torn apart never even crossed my mind. <laughs> this isn't a laughing matter, for the record. Indeed, just being alive is reason enough to give thanks to Adios. Even at the cost of a left eye. Your Highness. I hate to ask, but what's the prognosis? <laughs> a full recovery doesn't seem to be in the cards, unfortunately. But, as a musician, I'm just grateful that my hands and ears made it through in one piece. I suppose I have them to thank for that, huh? So, you owe your life to George's inner turmoil and the whims of that phantom thief, huh? You have an unbreakable spirit, your highness. Don't sell yourself short. So yeah, the real question of how they managed to survive being exploded in the air. This is... I underestimated them. Shara, I'm sorry. Sorry, I looks like I messed up. Goddess, please protect my daughter. You have 15 seconds until the hull collapses. So before then, I will offer you one final wager. A gravitational barrier will appear on the bridge for exactly 24 seconds. Let's see if you can come back from this. Ah! 
radios, help us! You gotta stay calm. Get down and brace for impact. Uh, over there! Damn! The gravitational barrier! It's not gonna hold. Don't give up just yet! Was I a moment too late? Nay, surely a flicker of hope yet remains. Can you still be plucked from the jaws of Gehenna? Show me just how far that luck of yours will take you, my dearest rival. So yeah, George was like, I can't in good conscience do that. But I kind of have to, so... Here we go! <laughs> I still can't believe that our friend the Phantom Thief saved you from all that wreckage. Guess his parlor tricks are good for something. If that's what he used to spirit everyone away in one piece. No wonder they couldn't find so much as a single body. On top of that, he healed his highness, the crew, and even the Viscount's grave wounds, didn't he? That's right. I was injured too, but somehow I made it out relatively unscathed. When the Viscount jumped in to block the hole in the barrier, I couldn't even use my arts to help him. Never felt so worthless in my entire life. I'm sorry, Laura. I dropped the ball where it mattered most. Like I've told you, Tobal, you have nothing to apologize for. I'm just relieved you made it out alive. I'm sure Father shares my sentiment. Well... If you say so. I admit I thought Viscount Arsade more or less invincible. I was stunned speechless to see him in that state. But for him, losing his left arm means he'll swing just twice as hard with his right. Power is but an extension of oneself, and what is a sword if not power wrought in steel? But ultimately, it's not the might of one's blade, but will and strength of spirit that decide the battle. The words of his lordship from the Infernal Castle two years ago. So ridiculously cool. Okay, Edge Lord. Given who we're talking about, I expect he'll only emerge stronger from the experience. If that's the case, this could well become the most difficult trial we've faced yet. <laughs> I'm inclined to agree. It'd be prudent for us to account for every contingency. There's also the promise we made with Lloyd, Estelle, and the others. Through that, we can't let them best us. <laughs> but what exactly is Rose up to? Sorry about my grandmother. She has a way of being evasive. I definitely was a little surprised by how sudden that all was. It involves the rivalry, though. The only thing we can do is check it out, right? Previous evening, after Reen and the others had been shown around the Courageous Two, which they boarded at Prince Oliver's invitation, they began discussing what they needed to do now that the war would begin in less than a week. As they spoke, a message from a rather surprising party arrived at the conference room. For those of you who have not yet had the honor, my name is Roselia Milstein. I am the elder of Erebonia's Hexen clan. Emma and Vita are my disciples in the magical arts. It is a pleasure to finally meet you, Prince Olivert, as well as the storied children of Crossbell and Liberal. How'd you do? Until this moment, I've only heard of you through rumor and legend. I've heard that you watched over the laying of Erebonia's foundation by Arnor I. Is that really true? Well, actually, that was my predecessor. It was Emperor Hector and Prince Dreykels who I was best acquainted with 800 years ago. Hmm, I cannot say the family resemblance is all that strong in you. 
but you definitely have a familiar fire in your heart. It's quite an honor to hear you say so. I've heard about Roselia from Ren. 800 years old. Even seen it with my own eyes, I can't quite believe it. I've heard a few things about those of you back there as well. Glowing tales from Ragnard and Zeit, both. Wait, what? Ragnard? For real? We haven't seen Zeit since. We spoke shortly before they vanished. Even I have no idea of their whereabouts now, however. That's a shame. And the sounds of it, Cassius doesn't know either. Ragnar the Ancient Dragon and Zeit the Divine Wolf. Two of the beasts entrusted with overseeing the Septarians. Indeed. Being sent forth by Adios. Much like the Holy Beast of Earth. Thomas Lysander, Second Dominion of the Grosritter. Estelle. Lloyd, I've heard many a rumor about your respective endeavors. As for you, your highness, I don't think we've had the chance to talk since you were last at the main campus. Ah, uh, and to think that you, a history teacher, are a dominion of the Grawlsrider. I must say, I was quite frustrated that I was unable to see what was really going on, despite my ties to Kevin. I see, so I guess that means you heard about us from Kevin and Rius. And it sounds like you learned about us from Wachi, right? Right, we're having all of them operate outside of Erebonia at the present. They're out there resisting Ouroboros and their allies working toward the Great Twilight in secret. The first, fourth, fifth, and sixth Anguis. It seems the enforcers who haven't come to Erebonia are also all out on operations. Looks like the intelligence division's active in other countries too, making some pretty serious moves. Red Constellation's main regiment, and the War God too. I guess, uh, Sigmund is finally going by the War God? Because he wasn't before. He was going by the War Ogre. So I guess they decide, you know what? If Randy's not taking the role, then Sigmund will be doing it. So, Uncle Sigmund's finally on the move. Yes, Arios and Risha are responding to their actions. It's the same with Noel, Chief Sergei, and Dudley, isn't it? I hope they're all okay. To be honest, things are looking fairly grim. So much so that the Papal Guard has begun to act on its own and is cooperating with Operation Meal Mirage. I suspected as much. Now's truly not the time for them to be going off on their own like this. Even during the Night Touched Affair 200 years ago, the Papal Guard managed to make a nuisance of themselves. For the time being, though, let's focus on the main issue at hand. The rivalry of the Seven, and... Ugh. Though it is unclear how... It seems the announcement that Operation Jormungund and Operation Mil Mirage will commence six days from now is connected to the spread of the disturbance in the spirit veins. What? Wait, does that mean it was influenced by today's events? The boss moving out might be related too. Yes, as well as my father, the Steel Maiden, and the others. This probably involves Mother and Sharon too. And Maribel. She seems to be working with Reinford somehow. There are likely many causes, but we now have a different grave situation on our hands. Meanwhile, spirit veins across the entire continent have begun activating. It's no longer limited to the Empire. Wait, what the hell? The disturbance was initially a gradual ripple outward from the Empire, but... It seems to be matching the coming war in its scope. Right, that's the Great Twilight at work. They need in full swing for the rivalries to even be possible. I imagine even now, they're preparing for the ultimate reformation of the Great One. If only there was something we could do. The solution is simple. Use this ship to whatever end you see fit. The rivalry of the Seven appears to be the true objective behind this plan of the Chancellor and the Gnomes. That much we can safely assume. And yet, it is this very same objective that may be our sole hope in preventing the disaster to come. <laughs> you for real here? It's true that ever since this curse was unleashed, it's felt as though everything's being guided by some unseen force. With that in mind, it'd be near impossible to try and prevent the war altogether. 
That's probably why Dad and Chloe opted for Operation Neil Mirage instead. But while we're on it, what exactly is this curse anyway? Huh. Hmm. We know full well the sort of strife a Septarian can cause. We saw so ourselves during the incident in Liberal a few years back. There, we had to come face to face with the same issues our ancestors contended with 1200 years ago. It was the same for us. We fought back against a centuries-long plan to artificially recreate a Septarian. One that had been lost due to mankind's own hubris. Yeah, I almost made a really big mistake back then. But then Lloyd and the others came and made everything all right again. In Liberal, a ring that could grant any heart's desire. And in Crossbell, a tree that could rewrite destiny itself. Each one a blessing, yet each one a curse. But in spite of that, Estelle, Lloyd, and everyone else faced them head on. They didn't lose heart even once. Therefore, discovering the truth is your responsibility now. It's not something Estelle, or Lloyd, or even the rest of us can accomplish. Only you, Class 7 of Thor's Military Academy. The Empire is facing threats both on its surface and behind the scenes. You're no strangers to kick and tail on either of those fronts. I can't think of a more tenacious bunch out there. The way I see it, you guys are the only ones who can do this. <sighs> it's up to us, then. Naturally, the Courageous Two has its own missions to see to. We must travel around the country helping people and gathering allies. Even so, I have no doubt that we can still serve as your wings of passage. More so with the Merkaba out of commission. After all, the difference in size should be more than enough to fit, oh, say, two Divine Knights and four Panzer Soldats? Hmm? <laughs> Oliver. You've put so much thought into this. We appreciate it. Then Thor's Military Academy's Class 7 would be honored to take you up on that offer, Your Highness. We'll do everything we can to assist you in your efforts as fellow members of the Radiant Wings. We'll help too. It's only fair after all you've done for the Branch Campus students. If you ever need someone to make that ship purr, I'm your gal. Fabulous! Delighted to have you. You see, we've been rather lacking in the crew department. <laughs> Well, I sure as hell ain't sitting this one out. What kind of instructor would I be otherwise? Count me in two. I mean, we're finally all back together again. Like we said, we're gonna be off doing our own thing, but we'll still be helping out. Same with us. We'll be catching a ride on the Bobcat 2 after we're done here. Now that you mention it, you did both say you'd be working separately. Yeah. The plan is to cover Eastern Erebonia, North Ambria, and Jirai. You mentioned getting in touch with HQ and Lamont. Guess that means you guys are heading out too, huh, Shara? We are. Though we won't be leaving the ship until tomorrow. Sarah, Fee, you guys got things covered here, yeah? Of course. When have we ever let you down? Call us if you need anything, okay? I guess... this is goodbye for now then, huh? Yeah. We've got some stuff to take care of back in Crossbell. Don't worry. We'll be seeing each other again before you know it. In the meantime, Let's give this our all. Yeah! We got this, Yuna! Right! Seems like we'll be able to divide things up by region, then. You should be able to just leave everything with the Merkaba Unit 8 up to Rosine, guys. I'll be arranging for its repairs at a nearby location. I really am in your debt, Thomas. Rosine, you too. Thank you. No worries. Please, look after everyone. It will not be easy. But our shred of hope has come into view. The time has come for me to undergo my final undertaking. G grandmother What do you mean, final undertaking? Listen well, children of Class 7. As noted, the spirit veins throughout the land are activating, and they are disordered as they've never been before. The same can be said for the shrines, the stages, for the rivalries. This includes the Luna Shrine, the only shrine we witches have overseen since ancient times. The Luna Shrine? 
Isn't that close to Milsante? Yes, it is the location of the reflecting pool, and generation after generation of wandering witches have watched over it. This pool reflects the genuine truth, and is believed to be connected to the origin of the Black Records. I didn't expect to hear those mentioned here. Yes, I myself was just told about it the other day. I suggest anyone interested in the real truth behind the curse to come. I swear on my true name, I shall provide the answers to your doubts, rest assured. A trial for everyone in Class 7 is what's needed here. Only Celine is left, yes? I'm going to need you to take your human form, Celine. Huh? G grandmother Aw, oh, bye, Rosine. By our friends. But Randy's sticking with us at least. I mean, Tita's sticking with us too, but like. We thought the Luna Shrine was a dead end, but there was more to it after all. This will be a trial for the entirety of Class 7. I'm reminded of our adventures in the old schoolhouse two years ago. Oh, you mean when everyone first met Malamar? Hmm. Yeah, and then that crazy go nuts corridor appeared at the end. The Reverie Corridor. Knowing what we know now, I think that place is yet another sort of shrine. I don't know what my grandmother's intentions are, but we should prepare ourselves for anything. For crying out loud, why am I... I'm not even part of Class 7. Just admit it already, Celine. You're one of us, whether you like it or not. This'll be the first time we've seen your human form since the Black Workshop, huh? Ah, to gaze upon both Celine's lovely figure and the reflecting pool in the same day. What fortuitous timing. Once everyone's done their little tour around the Courageous 2, we can head for Lake Gala. Probably be wise to land out in the water, put a little distance between ourselves and Milsante. Learning to switch between the silent navigation and optical camouflage modes is going to be critical here. Understood. <laughs> Things are starting to heat up. Next, our plan is to head to shore, with each group making their approach from the target locations. Fortunately, Estelle, Lloyd, and the others are already a step ahead of us in gathering intel. I'm sure they'll have hit up something useful by the time you get out. We'll be expecting good news, guys. But seriously, though, take care of yourselves out there. Right. That goes for you, too. It means so much to know you've got our backs. Class 7, it's time to make sure your preparations are set. We'll need every pair of hands we can get around the ship. So those of you in a position to pitch in, please do so. Absolutely, Instructor. Makes sense. Even with everyone from the branch campus here, this is a pretty huge ship. Right. It's probably best to make one more round, just to be sure. You got to a ship before you can get off the ship. Act 3. Seekers of the Dawn. The Courageous 2 is a newly constructed ship, but something about it feels nostalgic. Maybe I'll do one final sweep around the floor myself prior to departure. Alright. I need to find everyone going ashore and wish them luck again. Each floor has an elevator that you can use to move to the other floors. You can let, select floors that you have previously visited via the quick travel menu. Anyway, we got a shit ton of character notes. Ding, ding. And since we just escaped half an hour of cutscenes, uh, yeah. Anyway, uh, Selene is forced into your party. Well, not, not really forced into your party, but, like, 
she's she's gonna be forced into your party at a point. So I'm just gonna get myself prepped for whatever the hell is coming up. Not sure I didn't want to get rid of Yuna. Uh, Laura's coming. Actually, at least say you're not coming. Useless is coming, and Crow's coming. This is uh, where we report quests and stuff, but at the moment we're not doing that. Talk to our uh, light music band here. The ship is kind of okay, really. Purebred did brilliant, don't you think? Don't think I felt this exhilarated since the first time I read the Deathlinger. I can't, I can't do my Scottish voice today, I guess. You know my heart belongs to the railways, but faced with a machine this beautiful, even I can be tempted to stray. I know what you mean, Pablo. I'm still having trouble taking it all myself. I take it you three are running the bridge? We're at least... We're at least trying to fill in where we can. We're sort of learning on the fly. Louise, Tatjana, and I will be heading up comms and observation. On the engineering side, we've got me and Tita. My and Sydney are manning the guns. Without the combat tactics folks chicken in to help. Me, though. I'll be mostly held up in the workshop. As for me, I'll be helping Miss Minto with anything she needs. Sounds like you're all putting what you learned in your field exercises to practical use. I'm really proud of all of you. <laughs> Leonora's gonna be the co-pilot. Sounds great. <laughs> Aw, Valerie's really happy to be here. Also, uh... Let's check. Wow, you got so many! I should do this now. I'll take a wow. These res Somehow I have half the battle notebook done, even though I've, like, not scanned I'll take anything. So, so many! Alright. I got a lot of steroids that I have not been using. Okay, let's fix that. Hey, Yuna. I'm so glad they fixed this in Hajimari, where you could give multiple of these at once. Instead of doing it like this. Because this is brutal. later, because holy crap. So Angelica, what do you think? In a word? Incredible. This is top of the line next generation stuff. I've never piloted anything this responsive. And equipped with stealth capabilities on top of that? It's perfect. I don't know if we can ever thank Prince Oliver enough. Well, we can always repay his kindness by making full use of the ship. And stocking it full of cuties like Toa and Tita is a good start. And once we get them into the baths, Things are going to be even better. It's like a dream come true. So you want us to thank Prince Oliver by enabling you now? Thanks, Elfin. I know I put you through hell. I'm sorry that I haven't been in touch. Honestly, Your Highness, I should have informed you before anyone. That was my failing. Forgive me. No, don't be silly. With that wound, my brother wasn't going anywhere for a while, right? Thank you so much for helping with his recovery. Your Highness... You honor me with your magnanimity, truly. I have to say, though, getting Shara to feed me is definitely a memory I'll treasure forever. Although she did give me one legendary purple nurple when I suggested she diss the spoon and use her mouth instead. Goodness! So help me, Adios. Olivier, you're about three seconds away from finding out what life is like with zero eyes. I wouldn't have guessed it, but those two are much more intimate than I expected. Well, yeah, they're... They're lovers. Impressive. <laughs> Looks like you're already finding your way around the place. Yeah, it really is an incredible ship. This isn't the first time we've met, but I'd like to reintroduce myself nonetheless. I'm Reen Schwarzer. 
Good to meet you, Sherazard. Pleasure's all mine. I've been hearing a lot about you. It sounds like you've been to Gehenna and back more times than one. And you're not done yet, it would seem. Adversity seems to be the order of the day for those who call Erebonia home. But at the very least, it's made us a tough people. But no matter where we're from, I'm glad to be allies just the same. With Stell, Agate, and now you. You bet. I've got your back. We've been preparing for the worst for a long time now. And just between you and me is the Silver Streak. I really don't want to be outdone by the Purple Lightning. Oh. Come to think of it, you've been pretty focused on that for a while now, haven't you? <laughs> well, yeah. Despite us being the same age, she was the youngest bracer ever to reach A rank when she did. She's always had a reputation as a force to be reckoned with. Even Cassius relied on her. It did make me a little jealous, I have to say. You're both so fantastic, though. I really admire you, Shara. You know, even though Sarah's my former instructor, we have a close relationship as friends now. Well, I can believe it. Once I came to Erebonia and the two of us actually met, we immediately hit it off. We both like drinking, and our overall mm, situations are fairly similar too in some ways. Your interest in those the masculine persuasion couldn't be any more different, though. Ah, that's right. She's got a thing for silver foxes, eh? Though I hear the winds of change are starting to blow across that particular plane. Wait, I don't recall telling you about any of this. <laughs> Sherazard's so gorgeous, but she has a really cute side too. Don't worry, you two. I'll sort this out like a proper sister should. Or maybe it's best to just leave it to them. They are adults, after all. Oh, man. Hmm? What's that? I see that curious glint in your eye. This here is our true trump card. It's what makes ultra-long-distance communications with the Arcus II possible. It's an artifact known as the Sonorous Seashell. Sonorous Sea... Sonorous Seashell. I am not good at tongue twisters. <laughs> Mr. Debauchress Prince snuck it in. Wow, incredible. It's a delightful little device I discovered in some ruins on a visit with the Bracer Guild. That was about, oh, ten years ago now. It facilitates ultra-long distance communications in a snap, and is even able to bypass orbital comm restrictions of all shapes and sizes. It's currently in use as our repeater router, per Toval's suggestion. It's also linked up to your Arcuses via the Round of Seven app the Foundation made for me. Its capabilities are almost mind-boggling. If the ship control tower is set up with this, then... Then we'd have flawless connections with everyone involved in the Radiant Wings. As someone who will be helping with operations, I have to say I find it hard to believe its capabilities are even possible. I'm with you there. I guess artifacts don't need to be deadly to be powerful. Speaking of that, correct me if I'm wrong, but I thought the Septian Church collected all artifacts that are still functional. <laughs> uh, about that, after a bit of discussion with the Grawlsrider, we managed to come to an agreement of sorts. Our possession and usage has received tacit approval, on the condition that we abide by a number of itty-bitty rules. Oh, Olivert. So fortunate are we that a man of his eloquence and skill walks upon the earth. Ugh. At any rate, it seems like Cid Cedric is drifting further and further astray. I'm starting to fear that maybe we really can't go back to how things were. Your Highness. Come on, that can't be true. I'm just as glad as you to see him alive again. But feelings such as that are only for the weak! We're ending this world and creating a new order in its place. And an undertaking this great leaves me no room for weakness! Those words were proof that he's pushing himself too far. His infatuation with Chancellor Osborne is pretty clear. But I honestly doubt his resolve as one of the Iron Bloods is really so firm. Or as a Divine Knight Awakener, for that matter. I'm inclined to agree. Oh, brother, you silly fool. All we can ever do as people is work with the opportunities in front of us and never give up hope. Besides, I still need to meet him properly, just as I did the Princess. He is royalty, after all. If it's a family meet and greet you're after, Shara, you need only ask. Oh yes, there's mother, and father too if he's recovered. L let's take it down a notch, shall we?
Oh, Instructor Reen. Ah, Reen, taking a tour of the ship? It's been some time, hasn't it? About two years already, if I'm not mistaken. Right, I think the last time we saw each other was that board of directors meeting at the main campus. I was sorry to hear about what happened to the 7th Division, but I'm glad to see you're safe. Yes, no doubt thanks to the guidance of Adios. I admit it was difficult to watch the 7th get disbanded, but it ended up working to my advantage. Thanks to that, I was able to slip away and rendezvous with the others in time to help with the creation of the Courageous 2. You can never really tell where life's current will sweep you next, huh? That aside, have you not been able to contact Father and the others either? I wouldn't be contacting him and Orie in a short while. Before I do, though, I'd like to get in touch with Uncle Zex and Nightheart. I see, no doubt they're struggling with their positions, General Craig included. So I've heard, but they're still Imperial soldiers. That hasn't changed. Once Operation Jormungand begins, they'll most likely be deployed as the main force in the rear guard. And if they are, even M Operation Mil Mirage is s sure to face stern opposition. Right, if Uncle Zek's stratagems are combined with General Craig's unmatched power, then even the valorous Le Guin and tactical genius Cassius could be outmatched, yeah. The conflict might already be impossible to stop in any, any official capacity, but I'll do what I can behind the scenes. If you could somehow buy us some time on an official front, you'd have my deepest gratitude, Lieutenant Colonel. Instructor. <laughs> but of course. It reminds me, I'm many months late in saying so, but I want to thank you for mentoring my brother. I'd like to ask that you continue providing him with guidance, so that he may one day grow into a strong, independent man. Hey, Mueller. <laughs> in my book, Kurt's already there. But I hear you. As his instructor, it's my responsibility to, to continue leading him as best I can. I'm in your debt, Reen. Perhaps I'll go find a suitable hole to crawl in and die of embarrassment now. <laughs> uh... Aww, Mueller misses Julia. <laughs> There's this woman who's a major in the Royal Guard who is... Kurt! As a member of the Vander family, you'd do well to avoid speaking excessively right now. Y right. Come on, Mueller. I believe in you. Go get some. So, the strategy conference room and training room are on this floor. Do -do -do. As well as a recreation area, lounge, and bathing facilities. The training room cannot be used yet, but it appears to provide a good variety of combat training. People sometimes meet up in the bathing area, and washing up will restore HP, EP, and CP. Basically, hey, you want to get those unity points up? Take a bath. Let's see what's going on here. Hey Jessica, are you sure you don't want to go talk to Angelica? It's fine, she's still getting to grips with the ship's controls. I don't want to interrupt. Besides, I already messaged her after we infiltrated leaves. Glad to hear it. It's been a while since the three of us got together, huh? It's a shame we can't go hang out at Reset like we used to. Agreed. I could go for a stack of pancakes right about now. We'll get our chance. We'll all go together once the war is over. I got a lot more Crossbell to show you girls, too. Then I'll return the favor with the tour of Brewer. <laughs> and after that, you two can, can come to Ramaferia. We can go on a road trip around all around the places we grew up. Girls from the tennis clubs are such great friends. I'm almost a little jealous. Almost because he's boffing one of them. I mean, shh, don't worry about it. I'm glad you three get to see each other again. Same here, it's just like old times. I'm truly grateful to Prince Oliver for giving us this opportunity. And we get to stay together as courageous two crew members, so let's work extra hard. We won't let you down, Instructor Reen. Thanks, it'll be a big help having you on board. This looks like the men's bathing area. <laughs> Whoa, there's separate facilities for women and men. And they really went all out in the changing area. Alright then. Is that you, Reen? 
Hey, Elliot, Machius. <laughs> Guess we all had the same idea. Yeah, we were just getting starting to get a handle on the ship's function, so it seemed like a good time to go wash up. Mind if we join you? It does seem pretty spacious after all. Yeah, of course. Want to head in then? God, they even have horrible washing machines on here. <laughs> this is pretty amazing. Wow, this is like a full-scale bathhouse. It's almost too lavish. Could it even get any more luxurious than this? Was it Professor Schmidt that designed this ship? Him and Professor Russell from Liberal. It seems he was one of Professor Epstein's three main disciples. This may have been one of his suggestions, since he seemed to be pretty well acquainted with his highness. <laughs> hey, Alara, just in time. Most important part. Tita's grandfather, right? <laughs> I can see that happening, for whatever reason. I see we weren't the first to come up with this idea. Oh, hey, use this. Guys and Crow, too? So, every single one of us wound up here. <laughs> Looks like we're all of one mind. It's not like there isn't enough room for all of us to squeeze in. And our first bath on the ship should be a bonding experience, right? Crow just wants to see some dicks. That's why he's here. Beyond the skies. How far we've come. Yes, it does feel like we've come very far. I know what you mean. <laughs> kind of a surprise to see everyone here like this. For crying out loud, why the hell are y'all getting so mushy? I mean, we're on a brand new cutting edge ship here. You gotta get more excited, man. And while we're all here, let's get talking. The filthier the better. It's time to air out your dirtiest jokes and fetishes. But why on earth would we... Absolutely ridiculous. There's no reason at all we should participate. Come on, Crow. We're not students anymore. Wait, Crow never graduated. Maybe we can consider him a repeat student. Hey, who gives a shit about that? It's time to take it off, guys. Pretty damn sure guys will be the winner, but you never know. Some guys like Elliot are... Whoa, whoa, what the hell are you saying, Crow? Crow, this clearly isn't a dignified conversation. Yeah, what if a girl was sitting nearby and overheard you say something like that? <laughs> but would respectable behavior be in character for any of us? I'm just gonna take in the scenery and enjoy the water. I bet you are, Reen. I bet you are. <laughs> he says as he changes a meaningful glance at uh, Crow's bulge. <laughs> God. Well, at least they gave us some equal opportunity man service. Yeah, he really wants to see the D's. Alright, um... I don't think going into the ladies' bathing room does anything, but we'll, we'll give it a try. Yeah, it doesn't give us a scene, it just gives us uh, random peeps in here. Oh no, just actual party members in here. <laughs> I mean, I think Reen's, like, out and out bisexual. But, that's just me. The way he acts towards Crow is definitely not, uh... Just friends. I had considered myself fairly aware of what was going on with Mill Mirage. But between President Rocksmith joining the meeting and Prince Oliver showing up, I clearly had no idea what it really entailed. I know what you mean. The prince managed to keep it himself, and the ship, such a well-guarded secret, it even took me by surprise. I think our mutual friend over there will have some choice words about your bold declaration, however. Come on, Instructor Reen, don't be mad. I had a whole speech worked out, but now that I think about it, I feel like it might sound a little hypocritical. It would, given how you're far worse when it comes to trying to sacrifice yourself. It's just like Yusa says, with everything I'm done, I'm in no position to criticize you, Muse. I'll leave that job to Elise and Alfin. Oh, believe me, they've already made their feelings quite clear. Alright, I guess we're done here then. In any case, I'm just glad that everyone is safe. We'll be counting on you two for your help with the Luna Shrine, but take some time to relax before then. I intend to. Thanks. Thank you, Instructor. 
Hey, instructor, what can I get you to beverage? Oh, Freddy, I thought you'd be in the cafeteria. <laughs> I checked out the facility, sure enough. But there's no need for two cooks. I left Sandy in charge for there for now. Besides, I can do some cooking just as well over here. Kenneth from the Imperial Fishing Club left me all sorts of fishing supplies and the like. So, you want to trade in some fish? Speak with me, just like back during the field exercises. Sounds good to me. Say, aren't you hungry? I can make you something to snack on. What were you thinking of whipping up? Let me think. Stewed bee larvae, cicada fritters, grilled peppered skink. Now, now, don't go drooling all over your nice clothes, instructor. I don't think there's any risk of that. So, you still got that pension for including bugs in your dishes, huh? By some strange turn of events, my stomach doesn't really turn at the thought of it anymore. Freddy's a decent cook, too. It honestly might actually be tasty. Bugs or not. <laughs> oh, goodness. Anyway, we got the last fishing gear here, the EX Spool Sigma. And we can't get any more freebies. <laughs> You've got good taste! Uh, I'll buy a few of these. Come on, give it a try! Hey, what can I get you today? <laughs> Come again! Hey, what can I get you today? Um. <laughs> Come again! <laughs> Come on, give it a try! Yo! Hello, instructor. Hey, guys. I heard these two know each other from way back. They both grew up in Jirai. Must be nice for Stark to finally see his old friend again. Sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt. I'll go... No, by all means, come join us. Is that alright with you, Crow? Sure. Too much nostalgia talk makes me uncomfortable anyway. Besides, I gotta ask old Reen here all about how you're doing at the Academy. What do you say, Reen? My boy Stark giving you any trouble? I heard he's kind of a big shot at the Combat's logistics team. Real impressive, given how much of a crybaby used to be. Crybaby, huh? That happened when I was eight years old. I've changed a lot since then. I mean, I should hope so. Honestly, though, I think you've even grown in the time since I last saw you. I heard that after you left Crossbell, you ended up helping to complete the Courageous 2. That's right. Becky got in contact with me and told me what was going on. <laughs> well, you always were pretty sharp. Good keeping secrets, too. She made a good call bringing you in. Especially since you had an idea of what Yuna and her pals were up to. Hell, you even managed to get a hold of a lot of stuff about C way back when. Damn, man, it's almost creepy how good you are at this stuff. Speaking of C, do you still have the mask you wore back then? If you don't mind, I'd like to take a look at it. I second that. It's been a while. You guys just making fun of me now? Come on! <laughs> uh... Aw. Crow's just happy to see his buddy. Jubilee and Laura, huh? Straight to asking for a match, then. No, that's not the case. We both arrived at the training area independently and unexpectedly ran into another, one another. And you will be leaving for that trial soon. I would never be so boorish to wear someone out before something like that. <laughs> My bad, Jubilee. But I gotta say, it's pretty amazing we have such quality training facilities on a ship like this. Yes, I suppose you could say that, if you really wanted to. Previous Courageous also had substantial facilities, but there certainly wasn't an area quite as spacious as this available. <laughs> Find it irritating to always be receiving favors. So, as a training opportunity for you all, an archaism belonging exclusively to the Stall Ritter. May I present the Vanguard F2 Slaknir. Is that a state of the art archaism from Ouroboros? Like the one used at Hommel in the Naval Fortress. Are you still able to make use of them, even after separating yourself from Ouroboros? Yes, it's specially adapted for our own use. Sleipnir, come! Hmm, now that I see it up close, it is fairly intense. Going at, up against an Archaeism like this does seem like it can make for some phenomenal practice. I have another Sleipnir unit, actually. I wouldn't mind letting you use that one for training as well. While you're on undergoing your trial, I'll set them up to respond to specific combat situations for practice. 
I usually just leave it in the hangar's reserve area, so feel free to use it as you like, even if I'm not around. <laughs> Talk about full service treatment. We truly are in your debt, Dubly. Thank you. Oh, Schwarzer, I hear you play Vantage Masters. I've been indulging in it to enhance my tactical skills. If you'd like, I suppose I wouldn't mind allowing a challenge from you. Alright. Fight as you would a real battle. Oh, lame. I will dump the geographer over now. <laughs> Damn, getting all my carrier bells to start, huh? I'm almost tempted to just leave those as is. Okay, maybe that's actually a terrible idea. Yeah, that's how they work. God damn it. I think I'll be alright for this one. We'll see. Ugh! This can't be happening! There we go. And we got the Paladin Master for our troubles. Also, <laughs> excuse me. Good old, good old sniffles out of nowhere. They're just the worst. There's something in the meeting room as well. Oh. 
Oh, Reen. How's it going? Are you guys talking to Major Irving about the handover procedures? Yes, the ship's a new build. There are many things about it we don't understand. That's why I have the manual in hand to read and check as I go. Sounds tough. Uh, keep up the good work. Under normal circumstances, I should also be helping out too, since I'm part of the branch campus faculty and all. <laughs> well, you got a trial from Rose coming up at Lake Gala, don't you? You can just leave this up to us then. Just make sure you're prepared, got it? To be honest, I'd like to go too. But it's only members of Class 7 that are allowed to, right? It's kind of frustrating, to be honest. Sorry about that, Toa. I'll be sure to head straight to the ship with the trial results. Will you be heading down after the handover procedures to meet up with the main campus students, Major Irving? Right, so I'm planning on also serving as their backup, at least for the time being. Let's keep in touch, then. You'll help us maintain a shared branch campus mindset, so to speak. Of course. Thank you very much. We'll do so great, the principal won't know what hit her. Oh, Schwarzer, I wanted to speak with you about Major Rybelt, Claire. Right, we only saw an image of her on the Pantagruel, just like the Chancellor and the others. Though she's probably carrying out some pretty important tasks in a different area. Yeah, she's likely working to finalize the railway usage plants in preparation for Operation Jormungand's start, as well as carrying out her duties as part of the Ironbloods. Right. I know her, and I can only imagine how much losing Orion must have hurt her. It's not really my place to say, but please, do what you can for her. If things keep on going this way, she won't be able to handle it much longer. Understood. I'm not sure what I can really do, but as one of the people who cares for her, I'll do everything I can. That's all I ask. I'm in your debt, Schwarzer. Let's keep exploring. I should probably tell people to like, like, comment, and subscribe and stuff. I haven't done that yet. And now I have. I did it. This floor contains exits from the ship or to the deck. It seems they got a cafeteria, a sick bay, a reference room, and some stores here, too. Do. Various written materials can be accessed in the reference room, including the back re black records, which have been obtained and added from the Merkaba in sequential order. Do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do, do -do. Oh, look, there's Sarah and Tobal. I know some Sarah and Tobal shippers. They're like, oh god, let them interact. <laughs> so, what do you think of the Courageous 2, Reen? I gotta say, the original might have been incredible in its own right, but this? This is about as cutting edge as cutting edge can get. I hear they even put the armaments through a fair bit of upgrading. Yeah, those highness didn't seem too hot about it at first. Hot or not, we're in some we're in for some pretty intense combat in the coming days. That's just a fact. Once we get to that point, basic deterrence just won't cut it anymore. Yep, that's probably what clinched the decision to load up on the firepower. Sounds like they met some resistance from Professor Schmidt on the development side of things, though. I can only imagine. Professors Erica and Albert Russell were involved in this as well, right? Seems they had a tech expert from the Epstein Foundation coming on the down low, too. Yep, the ship's got all the latest tech, save for anything the Vern Company might be keeping under wraps. In other words, you guys got yourselves a pretty killer setup here. Make sure you put it to good use, alright? Got it. I'll relay that to His Highness and the other students, too. Are you going to meet up with Estelle and the others once you get down to the surface? Nah, I was planning on letting Sherazar take care of that front. I'll be operating on my own for a bit. I've got a few things I want to check out. I'm sure he'll be more than busy enough dealing with all the rivalries, but do me a favor and keep an eye on his highness for me too, alright? Of course, we'll take care of him. That your intuition call? Feels like it's almost always on the mark at times like this. Just make sure you say hi to Ayn for me, okay? But I haven't been able to get in contact with her yet. She must be talking about the hells of the head of the Grawls Ritter. I didn't know she and Toval were acquainted. Dude, do not do Toval's bonding event. I mean, nobody did Toval's bonding event. Yeah, that's how you get off the ship. Like, why would you want to do that? 
Ah, oh, Tatiana, I was wondering when I might see you again. Oh god. <laughs> and dilettante families tend to flock together, and Tatiana and mine have been since times medieval. No, Tatiana's father is a Viscount, while mine is me a Baron. She never let that stand in the way of our friendship. Well, the Dresdens have always been tolerant about those from other social standings, too. Of course, of course, and that shared tolerance is part of what's kept our families so close for all these years. That's a good kind of friendship to have. Oh, 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 beauty calls to beauty, after all. It was always our destiny to come into each other's lives. Just like me and Vincent, and how we fell at love in first sight. Oh, is that what happened? <laughs> good to see you're just as powerful as ever, Margarita. Oh, God. Thank you ever so. Oh, thank you ever. But yeah, you can see all the books are here, so if you feel like reading them, read them at your your own leisure. But we are not in my own leisure. Check out the infirmary. Pretty swag place. Oh, Reen. Hey, hey, how's it going? Linde, Vivi, I'm so glad to see you two are alright. <laughs> I was just about to say the same. Reen, everyone, it puts my heart at ease to see you all in good health. At any rate, it sounds like you're becoming quite the lady killer, eh, Reen? When was he not? So, any updates on your love life? Who's the lucky gal? It's you, Vivi. No, it's not. Vivi, please. I'm really sorry about this, Reen. It's okay. In a way, it's actually kind of comforting. Some things never change. In any case, I'm sorry for all the trouble I put you two through. If I'd just been a little more skillful in my command, things might not have gone the way they did. It's okay, guys. You have nothing to apologize for at all. If you hadn't drawn the enemy away with your Merkaba, there's no way the operation could have succeeded. Besides, it's about time we got some front page limelight for once. It certainly was a rather dramatic appearance, to say the least. By the way, you're staying on the ship as part of the medical staff, right, Linde? Where's that leave you, Vivi? Well, since I'm already here, I was thinking I could sign on as the Courageous 2's official photographer. I'm sure Rex can handle all the on-land coverage just fine on his own. What do you think? Great, that sells it. Happy to be aboard. Sure, good to have you. Looks like things are about to get a lot more hectic around here. Let me know what you need. Anyway, she sells uh, just general. Come again shit. anytime. You know, you know the stuff. All right. All right, one in here. Oh, Reen. Well, well, we finally meet again. R R Reen? Uh, are you okay there, Dorothy? Wow. I've heard rumors about that luscious silver hair and jet black outfit, but... Mm. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. This character development has my pen bursting with inspiration! Dorothy is just all of us, isn't she? Man, that edgy new look is just not fair! You don't mind if I crank out a script for a new radio show based off you, right? Right? It's business as usual with these two, as you can probably tell. No kidding. I'm not sure I've ever seen you guys ease up. <laughs> that might have gotten a bit excessive, actually. Even for me. 
Sorry, I got a little carried away myself. You don't need to apologize, I get it. This is kind of a lot to take in all at once. That aside, are you the one managing the terminal room for us, Monk? You know it. I'm a little busy with all my radio trista work, sure, but... You guys got way more on your plate out here. Can't imagine a single one of us wouldn't be out there to jump in to lend a hand. Speaking of which, Dorothy and I just finished setting up the terminal. As it so happens, the Imperial Museum approved my extended hiatus request. I'll probably spend most of my time in the reference room next door, so feel free to call for me whenever you like. You can go ahead and send all the data the branch campus kids have collected over to us. Battle and combat data goes to me, personnel files off to Vivi, and any other books or other written materials over to me. Okay, got it. Thanks for all your help, guys. It's good to have you aboard with us. This terminal has carried out connection tests for Palm Party. I helped a little. Oh, I see. You play Palm Party, right, Emma? Yes, sometimes. Oh, that reminds me. We haven't exchanged count IDs yet. We should play against each other if we have the time. Sounds great to me. Well. 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 Let's begin the match. <laughs> That was a pretty good combo. Sounds like Emma just knocked one out of the park though. little higher before I start trying to strike back here. Oops, I lose. Yeah, 800 is generally the mark you want to go for. Alright, we managed to do it. In one go, we rock. We're the best at sports. Gotten a lot stronger since the last time we met, Kairi. All that training you do must be doing you good. I'm noticing a considerable difference in, uh, uh, let's see, your deltoids. You can tell? That's great! And you're right, last time I took some measurements, my shoulders were at least a reach wider than before. See? Work hard and you're bound to see results sooner or later. Wow, Wayne's got a real eye for details. I'm so glad to see that you're unharmed, Patrick. And I know Reen feels the same. Thank you, Elise. I'm happy to see you safe, too. Instructor Makarov from the main campus got in touch beforehand to apprise us of the situation, so I knew better than to worry, but still. I see. So that's why the branch campus students are all aboard. <laughs> right you are. Clever as always. No doubt you were racked with anxiety over my whereabouts, just tight with the pain of uncertainty, so I must apologize. Oh, Reen. Schwarzer. Hey, good job out there, you two. Are you all set to head out, Patrick? N naturally, I finished making the necessary preparations yesterday. Good to hear. Honestly, I'd rest easier if I knew you were going to be staying aboard, but... Yes, I feel the same. What's your game here, Schwarzer? Leaving me alone with Elise, that isn't like you. What do you mean? It's not like I've ever specifically tried to keep you apart. <coughs> <coughs> Sorry, what? Uh, I smelled bullshit. Um, anyway. What? I shudder to imagine what you'd do if that was your aim, then. <coughs> Schwarzer, let me say this. I don't know how much of an ordeal this rivalry is going to end up being. 
but I will not, under any circumstances, permit you to disappear and leave poor Elise behind. Patrick. I'm sorry, I've been trudging around with an air of resignation without even realizing it. But you know, people might start getting weird ideas if you spend too much time alone. Maybe I'll have you show me around the ship then, Patrick, if you're so inclined. Talk about doing a 180. <laughs> it does my heart good to see your friendship thriving, you two. <laughs> Who the hell's Polar? <laughs> Is that supposed to be Paula? Maybe? In a completely platonic way. Right, may Adios be with us all. <laughs> Actually, the deck's just one thing, isn't it? I just want to swing around here. Yes, it is all just one thing, so. In case you're wondering, like, where certain NPCs are, you just got to swing around to the other side of the other side of the deck here. How's the, doesn't matter where I drink it, milk is milk. <laughs> uh, woo, excuse me. I wish. Did you need something? Anyway, Sandy's your uh, ingredient shop person, so. Please come again! Too many things here, so not to worry. Oh, hey, Instructorine. Hello. Hey, you two. Taking a little break? Hells yeah. I like this place almost as much as the Dirtflinger. We took a look around the other decks, but it's still hard to get a good grasp of all the facilities on board. Every facility stay at the art. They don't have a pool. <laughs> I think that might be asking for too much. We got great, great baths, though. Maybe you can make do with them for now. Don't swim in the baths. Don't swim in the bath. Well, here's something you don't see every day. I didn't realize you two had come aboard the Courageous 2 as well. Typo. As escorts for Major Michael, yes. Though we plan on returning to the surface before long. That said, I never could have imagined we'd end up having to face His Highness so quickly. But at the same time, we've been well prepared to do so. This was as good an opportunity as we could have expected. That does make sense. So, what's the situation with the Durflinger then? Yeah, did the Imperial Defense Force and RMP end up chasing it down? Imperial the Imperial Defense Force doesn't deem us worthy of wasting their time. We managed to keep the RMP in the dark as well, thanks to Major Michael. I think we'll all have a certain degree of freedom in our movements from here on out. Let's be sure to keep in touch, alright? Did you make sure to take down my Arcus number? I've already related to the communications team, if not. I yeah, you bet I did! Man, I'd be blowing your Arcus up non-stop if it weren't for the stupid war. Oh, was there something specific you wanted to discuss? Nah, my main man here just wanted to hear your silk, sweet silky voice is all. Is that so? In that case, I respectfully decline. And bam, shot right out of the gate. And I haven't even made an actual move yet. The more things change, the more things stay the same. For Sydney, at least. <gasps> Rip, my dude. <laughs> Bark. Anyway, it looks like Jingo's our weapon shop owner. Hey guys, welcome to the esteemed courageous branch of Nine Volley. Don't leave empty handed. I rubbed my eyes in disbelief when I saw your shop sign. How'd you end up setting shop on board? Blondie reached out to me. I was downright floored when he hit me up about taking care of personnel armaments. But I could give two shits whether he's a ghost or not. As long as Mirius corporeal, corporeal were set. I got to see some cool stuff here, so I decided to stick around for a while. Ever the shrewd, br ever the shrewd businesswoman I see. We're fighting against something on a whole different level than ever before. It's going to be very risky. 
Having a weapon merchant right on our ship will definitely come on handy. Eh, I got you covered, pal. I got some good stuff. Come on, boys. I got some good stuff. Where the frick do I get some souffle pancakes? Oh, that's why. I have to, uh... I have to go somewhere and buy them. Don't worry, I'll get that for, uh, I'll get that for Randy at some point. One day we'll get an Earth Talisman and put that on. Um... Come on, buy some more. Wanna buy something? Anyway, we got, uh, new weapons and stuff as well. Uh, why are they separated like this? 990, 460, 5. 975. Okay, so. God, that is annoying. Uh, in any case. These are just preferential to the stuff below, so... Done already? I guess I should actually spend my mirror on weapons. Um. No, I already bought a lot. Leave me alone. <laughs> ah, you're here. Ah, is that really nasty? Hey there, Becky. Been a while, hasn't it? It's been a wee while, but the time's finally come! Say hello to the Becky Association's Courageous Branch! Looking forward to your patronage trips. Don't be silly. We're the ones who should be thanking you. Seeing her over the counter like that really does scream courageous, though, doesn't it? It's like the Civil War all over again. I was just missing his Hugo rivaling up beside her. Yeah, looks like he's off doing whatever he wants now, as per. I'll have to prove to him that this way of doing things is just not right. Business is not just about the profits. You gotta have empathy for the customers, too. Well, it's good to see the Becky brand enthusiasm is never low on stock, at least. By the by, I plan on heading down from the ship soon after this. You can bet I won't spare an effort helping you guys out. We'll swap info next time we meet, so make sure you come and find me. Sad, you won't want to miss out on all the spicy new glamour shots I'm putting together, would you? Um, I think I could stand to miss a few of them, actually. Uh, let's just say we'll do our best and leave it at that. All right there. Soft donut cushion. We got it. Book. There is new Vantage Masters Mastercards. And uh hair color for Elise. And some pendulums as well if you needed them. Hope to see ya again. <laughs> Gonna be whipping up some sexy new photos, guys. Look forward to it. Alright, I 
think that's everyone here. Now to the hold. This floor contains the hold in the workshop. We'll be spending a lot of time here. So, you know, it's the Orb Factory, essentially. Along with some other things. Working with Professor Schmidt's done wonders for your skills, Dita. I'm glad to hear the Orbital Gear 3 units are testing well so far. Thanks, I'm really excited about it, too. Oh, hey, you were an engineer on the original Courageous, right? I'm amazed you remember me. This is actually the third RSA class airship I've worked on. I've been there right since the beginning. This one's packed full of the most advanced technology. Reinford, Foundation, and ZCF have to offer. It might well be my masterpiece. I only hope it proves worthy of what you and His Highness are trying to accomplish. Believe me, this has already helped us out more than you know. Between you, Tita, and everyone else, ZCF has done a heck of a lot for us. Well, it never hurts to have a good working relationship with the likes of the Prince. Now that the handover is complete, most of the ZZF staff are going to be leaving the ship next time we land. That means I'm entrusting my masterwork to you, Tita. Do me proud. Got it. I won't let you down. Thanks again for everything. Yes! So, uh, first off, by the Oberon Quartz. It's, uh, basically a Grail Locket, so it's a very nice, uh, sub quartz to have for specific things. Wait, no, I want to buy these things, damn it. Apparently, you can get them for all the waifus now. It's crazy. Just absolute bonkerness. So I have way too many of these. Let's just here. Come back soon. I'll help come back soon. Yes. And uh for the time being, let's stop. Come back soon. Oh, Reen. Just making sure the ship's equipment's all in order. Yeah, and getting ready to head out to the Luna Shrine. Gwyn, I know I've said this before, but great work on the Courageous 2 operations. And Ferris, it sounds like you, Patrick, and the others helped quite a bit. Well, only a little. And I was just acting as a representative for our sponsors. Handling Schmidt's unreasonable demands is exhausting work. R right. I'm just glad you two made it through okay. And I guess my mother and Sharon are safe too. Elisa. That stupid daughter of mine. And going so far as to involve Schmidt. Also, Franz is completely, I mean, what the hell was with him? Forget it, I'm sorry, Elisa. No, it's okay, Grandfather. I've also prepared myself for the worst for some time now. He's almost like a different person, even though he looks just like Father. But I'm prepared to face him. <laughs> no, you've really gotten a lot stronger, Elisa. Yes, it seems you've been really making strides alongside Reen and the others from Class 7. Uh... Hold on a minute, Ferris. Wouldn't it be more accurate to say, alongside Reen, and just end it there? Oh my, yes, that does sound better. Uh... Hey, Ferris, what is this about? I don't really know the particulars, but I think someone might be in denial about something. I'm guessing it's Elisa. Grandfather, Ferris, can the both of you please stop with the speculation? Alright, alright. Anyway, so it looks like you'll be on the ship for the time being, Gwyn. But Ferris, you said that you'll be heading down? Yes, I'm going back to Ordis. I need to speak with my brother about something. We're nearing the final act, so I'd like to give my best to Governor Regnitz as well. Uh, omission. Okay, I'd be happy to help out in any way I can. You would do well to accomplish what you must first, together with Reen and those from Class 7. I trust that's one thing you won't waver on, yes? Yeah, you're right. Thanks, Ferris. Let's both do our best. And let's show some pride as former members of Thor's Lacrosse Club. You got it. <laughs> That's true friendship. 
Right, I'm glad she's got such a good friend. What about you, Reen? How are things with you and Elisa right now? Um, that's... Uh... Grandfather? And Gwen was never heard from again. Valimar remains still and empty. I'm sorry, buddy. Ordeen, how are you finding the courageous too? I couldn't ask for more. Understand that always being in flight means I consume a significant amount of mana. The Meisters are excellent as well. I'm grateful to be able to rest in such a calm and relaxing place. <laughs> That's great. Still, I may ask you to lend us a hand again in the future. Let's make it through the rivalries, together. <laughs> By all means. Oh, Reen! Elliot, and Minton Kenneth? Thanks, Tio. I mean, Mint. <laughs> I'll have to agree with you there. By the way, Reen, are you still keeping up with your fishing? I've been hearing about guardians appearing all over the place. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have to, you fill me in then. But I know that Mint helped the branch campus. You help with the courageous too, right, Kenneth? Well, I did travel around all of Erebonia while investigating fish ecosystems. I guess I did help in a shared the information I was able to acquire with His Highness and everyone. I see. It sounds just like you. <laughs> Thoris really does produce all types of people, doesn't it? For sure. The occasional musical prodigy, even. Well, prodigy might be going a bit far. Seems like you've really improved your technical skills while at Liberal Mint. And you were involved with the construction of the Courageous, too. <laughs> well, I was allowed to join in on some already finished equipment, you could say. Professor Russell experiences extreme tunnel vision when focusing on research. But he wasn't overly strict when it came to minor mistakes. Working for him is pretty easy in that sense, just like with Professor Schmidt. I think you might be the only person who'd say that working under Professor Schmidt is easy. <laughs> Mint's a pretty big deal, too. Alright, I believe I've talked to everybody now. So, I think I can just head for the bridge. To all passengers, we will soon be concluding our orientation flight and chartering a course to the Luna Shrine. We'll be landing on Lake Gala in 30 minutes. <laughs> Good timing, I'm done here. I'll just double check that I'm ready and then head to the bridge. So in case you want to do any last uh, checks on your armor and equipment and such, now's the time. Hey, Reen, were you able to make that lap around the ship? Yeah, I was. I think I've just about seen everything I wanted to. It made me realize just how amazing the ship really is. Does my heart good to hear you say that. And no part of this ship deserves the Olivier seal of approval more than, drumroll please, the baths. We simply must bathe together when time permits. A chance to lay ourselves bare, if you catch my meaning. Well, you never have to ask me twice to take a nice hot bath. <laughs> oh, and I'm sure you heard the announcement, but our maiden flight will soon be coming to an end. Would you please ready yourself for landing, Reed? Can do. I've taken a lap around the ship and spoken with everyone who will be disembarking. Maybe I'll just wait on the bridge for now.
Here we are at the Luna Shrine again. Yes, but it feels different this time. Yup. It's because it's got that weird blue glowy shit. Rose did say that the spirit veins are becoming more active, so perhaps that's why. I'd wager good Mira, you're right. Now that I can sense mana, I'm starting to see what you mean. Feels like it's still being contained inside the shrine, though. That makes sense. This is the only shrine that's been overseen by the wandering witches for generations. My mother came here to purify its waters countless times throughout her life. Or so I've heard. Oh, right. I did hear something like that. You never really knew your mother, right? I've heard stories that she was a witch of rare and superb talent. But all this happened before I was born, so stories are all I have to go on. I was really little when she passed away, so I don't remember much about her. Grandmother told me all about the shrine. Deep within, beyond the altar, we'll find the reflecting pool. Gazing into it should light our way. Who doesn't love a convenient omniscient magical artifact? So, unlike on Baronia Island, this ship extends even beyond the altar, huh? Grandmother should have opened it up already. She'll be waiting for us. Is everyone ready to go? Almost. I need just a minute. Come, Thalamar! Hmm. Not taking any chances, huh? Or is it something else? Let me guess. You wanted the whole of Class 7 together for this. Right, and none of us knows what's going to happen, so it pays to be prepared. I already discussed it with His Highness Mint and the others. <laughs> I see now. We really are all here, then. Yeah... Well, guess we better mosey. Next stop, the altar. Hey, Selene, aren't you gonna change into human form? D d don't rush me, that can wait until after we talk to Rose. This kind of reminds me of where we fought Crow. Yeah, looking around, the place does seem pretty familiar. We may not need to worry about a rivalry this time, but... Am I really the only one on edge about this trial Rose has lined up for us? Yeah, you'll get used to it. BS like this happens all the time. What's that? <laughs> well, looks like we got something real weird here. We've seen that crest before, below the old schoolhouse and at the Spirit Shrine during the Civil War. I've seen it in Rufus and Milliam's eyes, too. And let's not forget Major Clare, Major Lecter, and Chancellor Osborne as well. It seems to have some sort of connection to either the Gnomes or the Great One. What about the Witches? Them too. This crest was used by both the gnomes and the witches until about 900 years ago. The Hexen clans lost any knowledge regarding its true meaning and uses by now. Hopefully we can over... Um, hopefully we can uncover more details about that as we continue with our investigations. Correct. All you must do is continue to move forward. Grandmother? Why don't you share some of your great wisdom with us for once instead of keeping us in the dark? I've been far too busy with my own preparations. Now hurry along inside. And, Celine, you may wish to steal yourself. Well, I guess that's as good a sign as any. Shall we? Let's go. But, hey, I made a valid point. You can't just leave us hanging like that. I'm pretty sure it's going to force me to adjust my party at some point. So until then, I'll just go wander around with this. Hey, 
Enter the gate. Welcome to the Luna Sanctuary. One of the nicest dungeons in the game, I think. Let's get our bearings. We must be deep within the Luna Shrine now. Or perhaps it'd be more accurate to say we've reached its very core. Correct. It's a mystical space outside of our dimension. It's a little different from the Spirit Shrines during the Civil War. Yes, it'd be more similar to the Reverie Corridor. Or perhaps the Dark Dragon's Nest. Yeah? What in the... Why am I... That sounded painful. Oh, wow. That was a nifty trick. Nice one, Catface. Who are you calling Catface, Puddinhead? Anyway, I didn't do anything. It just happened on its own. I advised you to steal yourself for a reason. The Luna Sanctuary is a hallowed ground that unveils the truth. And that's why Rose's voice is now silky smooth. Rose? Grandmother? What the? Then that means... This is Roselia? This must be how she used to look. Yeah, we've actually seen her like this a few times before. Though she transformed far more early this time than usual. Indeed. The energies in this sacred realm allow me to assume my original form with ease. And perhaps, even my true form. Huh? You have another form? In the depths of the shrine sits the Reflecting Pool, a holy relic maintained by wandering witches throughout the ages. Mirrored within it are the echoes of the Empire's hidden past, intertwined with the secrets held in the Imperial families Black records. It should show you everything, now that the Great Twilight is upon us. But before you can glimpse into the past, a trial awaits you. What does that entail? Man, things can't ever be that easy, huh? I'm guessing it's something like what you did at the Infernal Castle and the Soul Shrine. The ritual has to be preceded by battles. It is the same pattern as always, I see. <laughs> It would appear you're finally starting to catch on. Th Vita? We said bye to you just yesterday. What are you doing the here? The reason I had to bid you farewell in the first place was so I could assist Grandmother with her preparations. As such, I will be serving as the opening act for your trial. Oh, and I've brought a guest performer. I do hope you like surprises. It's just an excuse for us to fight Vita and our surprise guest. A guest performer, huh? I'm not so sure I like the sound of that. <clears throat> this is not quite what I had in mind, but I will allow her to do as she wishes. So long as she fulfills her role. As for yours, aim for the deepest recesses of the shrine as if your lives depended on it. Because that may, in fact, be just the case. This is going to be some trial. We are members of Class 7. No challenge will dampen our spirits. Well said. I must fulfill my duty. After all, I am a descendant of one of the four great houses. Milium sacrificed her future for ours. I may not know how to fulfill them, but I won't turn my back on the responsibility she left behind. I see. Well, the truth's out there somewhere, so let's find it together. New Class 7? Start searching the Luna Sanctuary. Emma, Celine, Eusis, I'm counting on you too. Understood. Ah, whatever. Let's just get on with it. So yeah, uh... Emma, Celine, and Eusis are locked. 
for obvious reasons. Vita's here, so I'll be bringing Crow. Um, there's a trial chest, so I am inclined to bring Elisa. Obviously, Yuna's gonna take a slot. And, I mean... I was considering going with Laura, but... Muse has more reason to be here, so let's let's go with this. And now to kick Selena out of the party. I really don't know why I have EP3 on him, but like... I should have better stuff available to me now at this point, right? Not really. I have 20 cast 1 quartz? Why? I was having to bait 3 quartz. anyone here who wants an evade 3? I mean, I can't just stack two evade 3 quartzes on people as much as I'd love to. Yeah, you know what? Here you go, Kurt. My treat. So yeah, heal up if you need it. Just gonna make a new save though. All right then, let's dance. Bring it on. Oh god, I gotta fix my party setup too. Oh my god, this is this is a joke. Let's go! Radical design! Leave it to me! Arc is activated! Alright! Take this! Wide open! Attack! I got your back! Thank you. My turn! I do love confusion. Also, uh, that's why they're not very weak in space stuff. Let's go! Nope! Alright! Over here! It's my turn! Kill like overkill. I got your back! Thank you. Now, let's keep going. Do, 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 do. Ah, oh, sorry, I didn't realize we were gonna get a chat like that. Oh, okay, so first off, use this. Go into the back, please. Onigashimasu! Yeah, you like... Emma should not be crowned the front. Celine, you can go like hang out around here. And, yeah, you know what? There we go. Something like this. That seems a <gasps> bit more reasonable. This is no walk in the park. Any bright ideas on how to disable that barrier? It draws its power from all the water in here. There must be some way to counteract <laughs> it. <laughs> it shouldn't pose too much challenge. The trial's only just begun. Let's scout out the area. Eat this! Let's begin! Or not. Too slow! My 
turn. Did I somehow miss the one that was actually casting? Oh my god. Here through! Rosetta Arrow! Now! Crow, come on! No problem! No problem. Over there. here! It's my turn! Alright, uh... Y'all wanna stop that? Break That's cool. Sledgehammer! Here I go! You can't escape! My turn. Showtime! It's my turn. Arcus, activate. Leave it to me. Here, through! Rosetta Arrow! Let's do it! Crow, come on! I hear you. I hear you. <laughs> Infinite propagation. Gross. It's my turn. One, but stay sharp, everyone. That was such an amazing erase button. It's great. Got a problem? Emma will solve it. Also, hey, computer, stop doing that. Cool. So, smash the thing. And we get through the barrier. Pretty simple stuff. Shrine, there sure seems to be a lot more water here than anything else. What? You never heard the moon governs the tides before? The two pretty much go hand in hand. The moon's reflection in water is often used in divination rituals. The more you learn. Crown Reiner, Link level 5. We're doing it. Take you on. Nope. Let's get him. Attack. Huh. 
Good luck! Thanks! Yes! What? I'm going! Arcus, activate! Sucker! Here I go! Light the way! Noble Arc! Here I go! Take that! Let's get him! Attack! All right! Showtime! There! It's mine! Y'all gotta stop that. <laughs> nope! Okay, let's keep moving. Yeah, I did it! <laughs> I grew up! A daunting foe. Let's test our might. Yeah. First, let's break the seal. Now I'll open up the treasure chest over there. Want to get some damage done? Ain't nothing better. Showtime! It's my turn. Dark Blade! Please! Now! They're mine! Here I go! You can't escape! Fire! Good luck! Thanks! Damn, that was a pretty good hit. Moving out! Judgment time! Eat this! Leave it to me! Let's go! Space, so. Here I go! Don't feel too bad about that. I'm going! Arcus, activate! Yeah! We won, but stay sharp, everyone. That's how it's done. Uh, I did it. Ah, uh, some normal gear too. <laughs> I even, did it. Even stronger now. A matter of course. Be getting, we're getting the power on. Yeah, gotcha. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Bring it on. Showtime! Here I go! Roar! Gold Dragon Formation! Here I go! Chuck! Let's get him! Attack! Sucker! There! It's mine! Sucker! There! It's mine! <laughs> nope! Yes! Here's through! Rosetta Arrow! Here I go! Take this! I'm going! Arcus, activate! Moving out! Roar! Gold Dragon Formation! My turn! Chip. Yeah! We won, but stay sharp every-
Ooh, a tough one. Yeah. Eat this! Gonna have to step up our game for this one. Light the way! Noble Arc! How do you like this? It's my turn! Huh? It's my turn! There! Leave it to me! Let's go! Nope! There! We won, but stay sharp. Well, no surprise there. Good job, Cat. You're doing it. So, quick, uh, take a quick trip over here and grab this treasure chest. Oh, that's a nice looking treasure chest. The Aurora Garments for men only. Um, drops my speed, but hey, I won't complain about the extra strength. I need to upgrade Fee's equipment at some point, seems like. And the dupes, too, while I'm at it. That opens the path forward. But there's a trial chest here. And this is why I had to bring Elisa along. I would have hold, held off on bringing her, but the situation called for it. A strong enemy! Be careful! Ah! It's my turn! Well, that was almost bad. Analyzing enemy unit! No, it's gonna use a magic spell on me. Good thing I have Zodiac Force up. Yep. We won, but stay sharp, everyone. Easy peasy. We got a Lunar Gyre for our trouble. And Zodiac Force now, Luminary Force. Just in time. So, what is the Lunar guy? Mirage, Strength plus 80, things cause Arts and Arts Defense down. Okay, that's actually quite nice.
Yeah, I think it's best on Ash, honestly, because he doesn't need the, uh, the arts up. Dragon Vision is nice on somebody, though. Somebody named, uh, Yusus Alborea. Thanks for wasting the zero arts turn. I appreciate it. I'm going. Roar! Gold dragon formation. It's my turn. Heal. I appreciate you. it. All right. You could have followed up on that. What? No, you didn't want to? Lame. Alright, another one of these. It's giving you a hint hint that you're about to run to a boss fight here. So make sure you're all set and prepped to go. If you're not, then you might be in a spot of trouble. Anyway, um. Not that I have anything against Yuna, I just want to... Actually, no, that's, that's silly. Yeah, that's fine. I can, I can start off with this and then switch as needed. I got Crow's new weapon? I did not. I can make, uh, level 3 orbs now, huh? Cool. Don't have the new materials to make these. God damn it. Oh well. It's not a big deal. Anyway, here's Vita. As you'd expect. <laughs> there you are. 
Are you ready to begin the show? Oh, I guess I don't have any, like, unique dialogue because all of Class 7's with me anyway. Okay, never mind then. This is dumb. I should have just picked whoever I wanted to. Hi, Vita. Can't even enjoy a peaceful walk without someone wanting to fight me. Aren't your hands full without having to deal with us? Well, preparations for Operation Mill Mirage are underway, and I'm dealing with the other Anguis on my trail. I'm more than willing to help out if I'll be getting a glimpse of what the Reflecting Pool has to show. Additionally, I've taken it upon myself to care continue the research carried out by a certain wandering witch, Isola. Mother? You were very attached to her, weren't you? Isola was Emma's mom? What was that task passed from one generation of wandering witch to another? Why, investigating the rivalries and the purpose of the Hexen clan, of course. It was her influence that made me begin my own research, which led to my chance meeting with the Grand Master. I'm doing this to honor her memory, and for Grianos, too. Huh? The familiar slain by Rufus. I understand the part about Isola, but what do you mean about Grianos? The reflecting, pearl, the reflecting Pool served another purpose 800 years ago. You should ask the Elder about it. But you need to defeat me first, as well as one other that awaits you. Ugh. Watch out! That's the true power of Ouroboros' second Anguis, the Azure Abyss. Can't you hold back a little? We're on the same side as her sister, dammit! I wonder... Do you truly have what it takes to find the truth hidden among the shadows? To emerge victorious from the rivalries ahead? It's time we put you to the test. Will you slip through my grasp, or fall to the abyss? Shimmer! Luminary Force! I got your back! Thanks. Let's go! Roar! <sighs> uh, healing strike! Uh. Now! You're wide uh. open! I'm up! Roar! <sighs> uh, healing strike! Uh. Now! You're wide uh. open! Arcus, activate! All right! Time to kick things up a notch! My turn! Showtime! Ha! There! I'm going! Turn! Roar! <gasps> ah! Healing strike! Blades! Dance for me! Yeah. <gasps> there! Well, she actually has physical moves, so you can't just nullify her with, you know, Luminary Force as much as you'd like to. Ha <laughs> ha! 
<laughs> A fine show you're putting on. Huh. Well, if you're going to get so heated about it. Moving out. Arcus, activate! I'm going! Huh? It's my turn! Oh, my party's too split up for Adamantine Shield to be any good. <laughs> Whatever. Crimson Slash! It's down! Let's go, everyone! Sure thing. Understood. Huh, over here. <laughs> there. Uh. There. I might have fucked this up. We'll find out. I had my thing just run out just uh, before that happened, and I burned all my BP. Being cool. Answer first. my prayers and appear before us. Oh, that's what emergency bumps are for. The lone guardian shield. Elegant, a mirror gleaming in the darkness. Shine, palace of Meridian. All right, go for it, Vita. Hearken to the Aria of the Abyss. Humankind are evildoers, shackled by emotion. Fury, misery, agony, enmity. Behold the Abyss, for it longs to be forever at your side. Back. My turn. Showtime! <laughs> it's my turn. Crimson Slash! I'm going. Huh? There! <laughs> Moving out. Alive. I'm up. You know what? Good luck. Here I go. Selene, you deserve a final shot. Make yeah. it count. My, how you've grown. I got your back! I appreciate it. Hm. That was acceptable. That's how it's done. Plane just pops in for the last hit. Like a boss. <laughs> I did it! <laughs> I grew a little. Yeah, I did it! A matter of course. Uh, I did it! <laughs> Not bad. Well, it would have been embarrassing if you lost, 
since it was all of you against little old me. Uh, are you leaving now? I'm a very busy witch. Can't get held up here for too long. Give my regards to the Elder and you know who. Ugh, good riddance. She seems keen on lending her aid to the Viceland army. Maybe that's because she can see what the future holds. She has better insight into this than we do, due to being both a witch and an anguis. We've got a lot to thank her for. Oh, that's right, she mentioned another challenger. Shouldn't you know? Aren't you supposed to be their boss? Well, I leave the finer details up to them. We'll just have to roll up our sleeves and deal with it like the rest. One thing's certain. Yes, this battle will be even more difficult than the last. <laughs> I don't mind in the slightest. Agreed. I will strive to reach even a portion of her skill as a master of two swords... Uh, as a master of two schools of swordsmanship. I'm ready for it. Let's keep going. Basically, uh, Aurelia is coming to town. Aurelia Claus is coming to town. She knows when you are sleeping. She knows when you're awake. She's gonna kick your ass if you don't shut up, so... I'm gonna go recover first. No sense in, uh... Doing this on no EP. It's my turn. On your knees. Yes. Arcus, activate. Here I go. You can't escape. Fire! It's my turn. One, but stay sharp at do 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 do. Let's grab the treasure. Found some treasure. Alien. Very well. It's my turn. There! I'll take you all on. Second form, damn! It's down! They're mine! This is it! Take this! Now! They're mine! Leave it to me! Arcus, activate! It's my turn! There! Yeah. I'll restore you! <laughs> you have my thanks. I will fulfill my duty as a noble. Anyway, useless kicks, uh... An inordinate amount of ass, so all all hail the king. Uh, can't go through there just yet, so we we'll need to find the. Uh... Oh, it's right over here. <gasps> Let go. There. We're gonna have to go a really long. Nope. Why even have this? If that's all it's gonna do. <laughs> Let's be careful. This. this one's strong. Be careful. 
Roar! Gold Dragon Formation! My mind is clear. My blade empty. Now! Action Slash! Shredded Leaves! It's my turn. Let's go. Away with you! They're open! Attack! All right! Take this! Yes! Dark Blade! Please! Now! There! What? Chaotic body fluid, huh? Nope. Gross. Wide open! An opening! I'll treat you immediately! <laughs> you have my thanks. Alright! You can't escape! Fire! Very well. On your knees! Now! <laughs> Don't give up! Thanks. Ah, uh, the zero percent of eight chance. What? It's my turn. Crimson Slash. It's down. They're mine. It's my turn. This one. Uh, Mirage is actually better. Huh? It's my turn. Nope. That's better. Damn you! I'll treat you immediately. <laughs> you have my thanks. Don't give up! Thanks. All right. There. Let's get him. An opening. Strengthening. We won, but stay sharp, everyone. All right, Yuna Sirius is up to level eight. Holy breath, more counters, and more evasion. <laughs> I grew a little. Well. Oh, a treasure chest. We got some Phantom Moon shoes. Looks like these are ladies only. Uh. Defense, movement, and strength. Here you go, Lisa. I insist. Sixty-nine percent evasion. Oh yeah, boy. Okay. Pretty good. This quickly. Let's go. Raging fire formation. <laughs> now. Attack. Yes. Huh? Let's go. Crimson Slash. Now. They're mine. You have my thanks. It's my turn. Now's our Perfect. chance. There. <laughs> we did it somehow. Indeed. 
Let us continue onward. Lane, that wasn't anything new. My turn. Let's go. Away with you. It's my turn. You can't escape. Fire. Weak. I'm going. Huh? You have my thanks. Very well. Let's go. Away with you! Now! Attack! Alright! Uh, Wide open! Get him, instructor! Leave it to me! It's my turn! Crimson Slash! It's down! They're mine! I'm up! Crimson Slash! Now! They're mine! It's my turn! Arcus, activate! It's my turn! All right, got it. A matter. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> I did it. Dragon incense. Ha! There we go. The last path is open. I do like the emblem ports, but I don't like keeping it there for him. If that makes sense. Um, we're gonna go back to the skull ports, I think. I wanna have access to more adamantine shield users. Mm, this party is pretty split up, so I instead is Melissa in, and we are going to be very physically oriented. No surprise, we're gonna be fighting Aurelia. I mean, Kurt pretty much gave it away, but we're gonna be fighting Aurelia. So, let's get ourselves prepped and ready to go. Also, we got a new orb thing, right? With the blue, the uh, saffron gem, right? Yeah, this is, uh... Basically a big uh, stat boost for health and EP. If you're looking for a character to be more survivable, in which case it'd be like Machias or Laura. I've got an HP 3 ports on him, so I mean, I might as well just upgrade him. Or, or not, because I don't... There's... There's an easier way to do these things. I have like a better break ports. Really? Okay, sure. Uh, more defense. Do it. Just, just all defense ports is. That's what. That's what we're here for, Machias. Oh.
Damn it. Really? Uh, I can get Laura a slot. And Mach. Or Machius or Sarah. Sarah's actually lagging behind, so. Still don't have enough yet. Alright, whatever. Saving again. Alright, let's go. Hi, Aurelia. <clears throat> I see you're still raring for a fight. Uh-oh. It's kind of you to find some time for us in your busy schedule. I'd rather she didn't. You took care of the Pantagruel for me, which freed up some of my time. I wish I could fight Master, but that is impossible at the moment. As thanks for the Pantagruel, I'll serve as a warm-up before you face your next trial. You'll be like killing two birds with one stone. You sure know how to make people, people feel special, huh? Principal Le Guin, we accept your challenge. We've got more people, but we're not shooting ourselves in the foot just to make things fair. Heh. <laughs> you think that makes a difference to me? Her battle aura is... I am the Golden Rock Shasa. It was neither my sword nor my Panzer Soldat which inspired this title. It was both this brilliant aura that shines around me, and the ferocity in which I wage war. A fitting name for one who shines on the battlefield, not simply as a soldier, but as a peerless general. Fitting indeed. There may be many of you, but you'll need all your strength to triumph over me. Just as it will be with the Jaeger King and the Lance Maiden. You must prove yourselves here, especially if you wish to triumph over the Blood and Iron Chancellor, he who rules this turbulent era. Yes, they are all unparalleled commanders in their own right. I get it. So this is a test to see if we can beat someone who's on their level. You must the entire battlefield's trampled in her wake. You will kneel before my blade. Lude. I won't hold back. Fight as though your lives depend on it. Resonate! Divine Song Formation! Yeah! Come at me. Huh. Nope. Yeah. Let's get him! An yeah. opening! It's my turn. Divine Shield, protect us! Leave it to me. What? Let's go! Roar! <gasps> Helix Strike! Uh. Take me lightly. Uh, let's do it. Ah, uh, you know you were there. supposed to counter there. Oh well. Here I go. Eh? Very well. Yeah. Turn to dust. Prismatic flame. Weak. Divine Song Formation! All right! Time Barrier! Break! Very well. 
Shield, protect us. Yes. Arcus activate. Ha! Strengthening. Yeah. Ugh. It's my turn. Light the way. Noble Ark! It's my turn. Let's go! Only just getting started. I'm up. Roar! <sighs> Helix strike! Uh. It's down! They're mine! <sighs> Very well. Divine shield. Protect us! My turn. So yeah, this is gonna happen. Very no well. What? Uh, let's go. Uh, ha. Uh, here I go. Arcus, activate. Let's go! Leave it to me! Light the way! Noble Arc! It's my turn! Arcus, activate!
Leave it to me. It's my turn. Oh, how dare you. Crimson Flash! I didn't say you were Leave about to me. cast. That's a crime. Yo, are you late to the party? Lighting light. I mean, in my blade. we're just we're just beating up Aurelia. I we're trying to. <laughs> so, I'd say you're right on time. Not bad. All right, broken. Here I go. And I got some turns out of this. That's nice. Time barrier. I'm up. Yeah, I Here's finally got out of Act Rosetta 2. Arrow. The act that never now. ends. There. Very well. Alright, 14,000. I should be able to get the finishing blow with you, Yusus. Um, if not, I mean, I can just ask craft so... <laughs> yeah, we're good. They're open. Get it. It's mine! This is it! <laughs> Splendidly done. Ah, excellent teamwork. Yeah, let's keep moving. All right. And hey, the Scald and Bridger Quartzes are level eight now. We're doing it. And even though I'm just using the Titania as the sub quartz, it's level seven now. <laughs> A matter of course. And you also got the Cornelia gem. <gasps> That's how it's done. Well, no surprise there. <laughs> I did it. <laughs> doot, 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 doot. We managed somehow. Yeah, we passed the test, I'd say. The Sanctuary has accepted you, but one more trial awaits you up ahead. You've made it this far. Don't lose now. That's Vita's teleportation skill. Yes, I've seen it before. Thank you for your time, General. Good luck with Operation Mill Mirage. Rest assured, it is in excellent hands. Take care, Your Grace. Farewell, Schwarzer. It's been a pleasure, New Class 7. Perhaps our paths shall cross again. Goodbye. B b bye and thanks. Don't disappoint your former principal. I don't know if uh, abusing Platinum Shield and Heavenly Gift is uh, disappointing our principal or not. Woohoo! Another victory for us! Yeah, just one more big battle left. Do you think that's going to be Roselia? The Hexen Clan's legendary elder who's been alive for over eight centuries. She's got her original form back. Does that mean she's recovered her full power? Don't forget, she mentioned something about her true form. Grandmother keeps many secrets, even from our clan. The truth about Selene and Griana's, for example. Hey, speculation won't lead us anywhere. But I'll be with you every step of the way, so you'd better be committed to this as I am. Yeah, you got it. Alright, let's go! Oh, uh, which one, Wally? There's a bajillion CS2 broken strats.
<laughs> uh, I'm sure it's fine. Almost like the broken strat of using Emblem to just recover all my CP really, really quickly. And in this case, I'll at least use an item. Hey Silver, welcome to the stream. Hope you're all having a lovely Tuesday today. It is Tuesday, right? Yes, it is. I got a prize for remembering what day it is. This looks important. Luckily, I am very tired. Ah. Uh, maybe? It is kind of important. <laughs> ah, you're just about to pass out, huh? Well, in that case, uh, have a good rest and see you some other time. Thanks for popping in for it. A little bit. Why is there another charging station right here? That's silly. So you've arrived at last. Well done. Am I at the end? Uh, I'm at the end of this dungeon. I'm not nearly near the end of the game. Hello, Grandmother. Is that the reflecting pool? Yes. Though the proper name for it is the Spectral Moon Mirror. Take care, man. Oh, the water's so crystal clear. So this is what the Wandering Witches spent so many generations watching over. Now I see. It's actually an artifact, isn't it? F for real? For real? Hmm. It does emanate a certain aura, not unlike that of the Bell of Crossbell. Very astute. That particular artifact was passed down through the Kreuz family. It is but one of many. The tetracyclic towers of the Burl, the recluse cube of the Liberarch, the black records of the Arnor family, even Prince Oliver's sonorous seashell. Legend says Adios bestowed artifacts to a number of different groups back in the days of yore. Which would mean this mirror was the artifact consigned to the witches. Correct. The Spectral Moon Mirror works in tandem with the Black Records, and is itself connected to the spirit shrine scattered about the land. It is also the source of the many visions you have experienced. Nevertheless, it is quite a rarity for its powers to manifest, even for us witches. But everything changed the moment we congregated together in this shrine. Emma, the wandering witch, and Selene, her familiar. Schmorzer, the cursed sacrifice, and I, the elder of the Hexen clan. The great twilight is upon us, and a frenzied thirst for blood sweeps over the land. Mmm, blood. So we're really doing this? Red Moon Rose, the true ancestor of the vampires. <laughs> the term vampire is little more than slander. A myth that masks the reality of my kin. Although, when it comes to manipulating vitality, I suppose there is a hint of truth to the tales. Our boobs can get even bigger. Uh, nope. Surprise. Uh, the hell? It's a sphinx. A holy beast. You're... The origin of Grianos and myself. Roselia was the name once born by an ancient creature. Twelve hundred years ago. 
It fused with the Kin of Fire's Elder to prevent a great calamity of their time. This creature was the holy beast sent forth by the goddess, the Burning Sphinx. Aww, it's a big kitty. Huh. Grandmother! <laughs> so you're the one the church has been searching for. The other holy beast, long thought to have disappeared. Damn, who would have guessed? As I have already stated, I am not the first to bear the name Roselia. The original disappeared 900 years ago, likely due to the gnome's betrayal. I began my existence as a familiar, not unlike Selene. What? My predecessor showed me this place, telling me to return here should anything happen to her. I obeyed, and when I arrived, the spectral moon mirror allowed me to inherit a part of her memories, as well as her mission. <laughs> Thus did I become the second Roselia. <sighs> Come to think of it, that bird Vita used to own had azure wings just like those. So yep. both familiars were made in the image of the holy beast that created them. Now I understand why you wanted Selene to come here. Indeed. The Great Twilight is upon us, and our clash with the gnomes draws ever closer. Given the state of the world and the coming of the rivalries, nothing is guaranteed. Roselia is basically writing her well here. As such, should the worst come to pass, Selene is to serve as my successor. But that would mean... Rose, just what are you planning to do? Nothing so drastic as dying, I assure you. But we must account for every possibility. Filling the air with strife will cause the reflecting pool to show us visions linked to the Black Records. Having a wandering witch and the ultimate sacrifice here should allow us to see the truth of this curse in its entirety. Uh. I see. We need to uncover the full vision. All the glimpses we saw in the other shrines were just pieces of it. And an Whoa! What a formidable aura. But we can't back down now. Right. It's now or never. Class sevens, new and old. It's time to face our greatest trial yet. We'll prove the time Milium bought for us was not in vain. We will fight to uncover the hidden truth. I've got a few choice words to say about all this, Rose, but I'll fight you first and complain later. Got a girl. <laughs> then come, children. Face me with the full extent of your strength. We shall see how you fare against the Hexen Clan's elder. I, a holy beast of the goddess, Roselia the Burning Sphinx. Come forth, lest hesitation be your undoing. Yeah! <laughs> Celine? Complaining? Nah. I Let's know. go! I don't know what y'all talking about. That doesn't sound like Celine. Not at all. Ha! I appreciate it! Thank you. I'm up! Shimmer! Luminary Force! Let's go! Arc is active. 
activate! Nope! Let's get him! An opening! There! Alright, so I'm actually taking damage from this from using my arts. Is that what I saw happen, or did I just not see that properly? I got your back! <laughs> Thank you. Okay, I did take damage from that. Good to know. Roar! <gasps> uh, healing strike! My turn. Shimmer! Luminary force! Moving out. Showtime! There! Attack! Yes! Arcus, activate! Not on my watch! I got your back! <laughs> Thank you. Oh, is this as far as your power goes? I mean... I'm going! If you want me to cheese the fight more, Marcus Roselia, activate. I can. Let's go! Huh. Alright! Shimmer! Luminary Force! It's my turn! Arcus, activate! It's my turn! It was an actual physical attack. I'm up. Roar. Helix <gasps> uh, strike. Now. They're mine. All right. Showtime. There. I got your back! <laughs> Thank you. I'm going! Huh? There! All right! Chop! Let's get him! An opening! <laughs> it's my turn. Uh, what? Healing. I appreciate it. Take this. Nope. Let's get him. All right. Everyone ready? Leave it to me. No I got your back! <laughs> Thank you. Yes!
I wish I could do more damage than this, but I guess this is fine. Um, I can't get them to 200 CP with Serene Blessing. Dark Blade! Please! Now! You're wide open! Oops. Accidentally Answer used Emma's. <laughs> Accidentally used Emma's. Oh well. Here we go! Shoulder the cross of defiance! Cross rebellion! This is it! There we go. Easy peasy. Okay, let's keep moving. And hey, we got the Virgo and the Nidamas Quartz is up to level 8. Alright, got it! Yeah, I did it! Summon Draken 2! <laughs> That's how it's done. <laughs> I grew a little. Moulin Rouge too. A matter of course. Platinum Shield too. Damn. Well, uh -huh. I did it. Huh? How'd you like that, huh? That was tough, but I think we did it. I didn't expect you to be able to hold your ground so fiercely, children. Now I understand how Ragnar and must have felt after facing your kind. <laughs> oh, Argus. Huh? I know of the ancient dragon, but the other name... It sounds similar to that of the Steel Maiden's Divine Knight. It is a name that has passed from this world into oblivion. Because apparently the Great Twilight can just erase names from existence. But back to the matter at hand. You have all passed the trials set before you. As for what comes next, you had best brace yourselves. Uh. The Spectral Moon Mirror. It's... I mean, underestimating class seven's part of the I'll guide us through. Everyone get ready. <sighs> what is this? It's the it's basically the, of the past cold preserved steel experience in the black point. records. A reality even I have yet to see. Do not avert your eyes. This is the truth. Damn it! Why? How could the boss just leave us like this? He told us to take care of Fee. He must have been prepared for this. The boss dragged Baldur the War God straight down to Gehenna with him. I'm sure he's happy about that. And yet... What a shame. It would seem I failed to make it in time. You. Ain't you that guy from the workshop? Why, yes. Oh, I do hope our S-weapons are serving you well. I have a certain proposal that you might find of interest. And as it so happens, everything we need to execute it can be found nearby. If all goes well, it may be possible to bring your boss back to life. What was that? Now you're just talking crazy. Very well. I cannot fault your suspicion. Perhaps the Red Constellation would be interested in having their leader back instead. <laughs> How convenient. There is, after all, only room for one in this deal. 
Congratulations on completing your trial. I trust you understand your situation, Rutger Klossel. Yeah, let me see if I got this straight. I get to pilot Zector, one of the fragments of the Great Power. Which means, somehow or another, I ended up being the chosen Sap. But not by old Palatinate over there, per se. You set me up, didn't you? Oh, and what makes you say that? Don't play dumb. I know you've been given weapons to both us and the Red Constellation. Wouldn't be any of my business ordinarily, but when I fought Balder, I realized something strange was going on. We duped it out for three days and three nights straight. Guys gotta wonder how that's even possible. Hmm. <laughs> and on top of that, this big thing just happened to be sleeping right next to where we died. I can't even remember why we chose that place for our final showdown. But it's obvious to me now. You've been the one pulling the strings behind our backs this whole time. <laughs> Relinquish it to me. It belongs to me. Your soul. Your entire being. <laughs> you never do tire of this, do you? You are the embodiment of delusion. Repulsive, without a single shred of dignity, unlike Valimar. Compared to me, the Ashen Knight is nothing more than scrap metal. Accept it! You. With the heart of a lion deserved better. You alone deserve to pilot me. Dracos? Uh, damn. The Argent One comes. But it matters not. You shall never escape my grasp. No matter where you flee, your weary soul will never find refuge. Dracos, what was that just now? <laughs> it's been an age and a half, Leanne. You haven't changed at all from when I last saw you. No, if anything, you're more beautiful than ever. <laughs> Your flattery won't work on me. I assume you heard what became of me from Rose? Indeed. She told me of your revival, and how you'd left Erebonia in secret. What a heartless woman you are. We promised to grow old together. Yet you've left me here to grow old on my own. Even so, my thoughts have always been with you. You and Evelyn's children have grown up splendidly. Your bloodline will surely be blessed with many descendants. I regret that I could not have given you the same. Nevertheless, I am truly happy for you. Leanne. Now please, tell me, what was that earlier? That horrible darkness hanging over you? How long has it been haunting you? And why? My name is Georg. I never had a surname, but the chief told me to pick one, so I took out the G from Gnome and went with that. Yep. <laughs> because, you know... We gotta go undercover. No one will expect I'm a gnome. Just, uh, that's my last name. My last name now, it's gnome. The idea of having GG as my initial sounded silly to me. Repetitive. That's really all there is to it. When I left the workshop, my real memories were replaced with fake ones. Not that it was so bad. It was as if I'd become a character in a story. I played my role. Going to school, making friends, unaware that I'd been regularly reporting back to the workshop the entire time. They'd used the Faceless's hypnosis techniques on me, having stolen them from Ouroboros. But honestly, it wasn't that bad, considering it was just a dream. Sup, Joshua? Wait. <laughs> Reviving Crow was simply a matter of efficiency, nothing more. The Chief gave me an earful for it, but I knew Crow would be a suitable candidate for the rivalries. That's the only reason I did what I did. It's the same reason I didn't kill Angie. 
in the same reason I gave the courageous a chance. Now, now, there's a good boy. He has a gentle look to him, just like you. We should be glad he hasn't taken after me. Yeah, not because, you know, you're a sap. It's because, oh, uh, it's just a matter of efficiency. I'm not, I'm not hard <laughs> at all, guys. Though I suppose if he had my rugged features, he'd have no end of admirers. <laughs> I'm sure. Besides, you resemble your father too, don't you? Though I might start to worry if you turn out half as oblivious as him. Well, shit. Turned out double as oblivious as him. Hmm? How do you mean? <laughs> you see? But in a way, that's just what I love about your father. Take care, dear. Best of luck with tomorrow's mission. I'll be off, then. I love you, Kasha. And you as well, Reen. It's been 180 years since his passing, and only 30 since his soul found its way back to this world. A wonderful wife and a healthy child. It seems there's no need for me to be concerned. But I fear the darkness still hangs over him. Perhaps it's time I reconsider that invitation. <laughs> Yep, what? ultimate stalker. Again? Honestly, you and your research projects. Well, whatever it's about this time, I'm sure you'll make it a success. Like always. Just try and make it back for the weekend, all right? My father would love to spend some time with you. As would Elisa. Man, imagine Arena actually being caring and considerate. I'll see what I can do. I love you, Arena. Oh boy, what in Adios's name am I doing? Spending my days designing weapons instead of spending time with my wife and daughter? Not that these recent headaches are helping, <laughs> or these sudden drowsy spells. They couldn't find anything wrong with me at the clinic, though. The Panzer Soldat. With any luck, it'll revolutionize the industry as we know it. But will it be good enough for the professor to approve as my final thesis? Wait, my final thesis? Where did that thought even come from? It's almost as though... Um, am I trying to leave this place? Yes, you are. <laughs> Open your eyes, Franz Zuman. I have already claimed the king. All that remains is his steward. Accept your fate. <laughs> Mr. Franz Reinford? Pardon my intrusion. I am one of the enforcers of Ouroboros, number nine, the Severing Eclipse. I've come to retrieve the research reports, as per your agreement with Professor Novartis. <sighs> you are Mr. Reinford, correct? An affiliate of the Thirteen Factories? Though that is indeed my name, it is not who I truly am. <sighs> Franz Reinford was nothing more than a temporary alias. It is nothing compared to my true self. A name passed down for centuries from one servant of the Great One to another. Uh, I beg your pardon? Are you having an identity crisis, sir? I suppose I should cast my alias aside now. You couldn't have arrived at a better time. I regret to inform you that I will not be relinquishing my research. Try and obtain it by force if you like, but be warned, it won't end well for you. Looking back, I've experienced more than my fair share of misfortune. My parents were wealthy landowners in the north, but an avalanche claimed them while I was still young. Hey, Ventus. It's going all by right. By some stroke of fate, I was taken in by the Baron of Ymir and sent to Thor's military academy. 
As the years went by, my career progressed well, granting me many close friends along the way. And then, well into my thirties, I met her, the woman who would become my wife. Oh, I experienced my fair share of teasing, but in spite of that, our union was blessed. It was around that time, however, that I started hearing the voice. Relinquish it to me. It belongs to me. Your soul. Your entire being. Yes. Yes. Unable to seek anyone's counsel, I tried to seal it deep within my heart. Yo dudes, I got this weird voice talking to me in my head. By the time we'd married and our son was born, the voice had faded into only the faintest of thoughts. But no sooner could I breathe a sigh of relief, had it returned at the very worst point of my wretched life. Thank the goddess. You're okay. Please, Killian, I beg of you. Save her child. No! Why? Damn you, Arundel! What did Kasha and my son ever do to you? I'm your enemy! I'm the one you want! Hadios, please! Someone answer me! Goddess or fiend, I don't care! I'll do anything. Take me instead if you must! Just please! Spare our son's life! Oh, how long I've waited to hear those words. Waited and waited, Trichels, for two hundred long years. This time you'll be my awakener, not the Ashen Knights. Agree, and I will deliver your son from death. It was you. You're the one who did this. All of it. But I don't care anymore. Take my body. Take my soul. Do what you will. So long as you save my son, it doesn't matter what happens to me. Ebonite, Ishmelga! So yeah, some pretty heavy stuff right there. <laughs> there it is then, the whole truth. So the duel the boss died in was rigged from the start. By Black Alberic. But even he was just a puppet. George too, though his circumstances were a bit different. Yeah. And what was that thing possessing Elisa's dad anyway? It looked like he was taken over by another persona. The Chief of the Gnomes. The being that possessed him has achieved immortality through means different from mine. I suspect it lives on by becoming one with any descendant of the Gnomes it deems worthy. Almost akin to a parasite of sorts. Father. We also learned the truth about Arian Road, or Leanne Sandlot as she was once known. She spent 250 years watching over the Empire, as well as the man she loved most. A saint in the truest sense of the word. I mean, that's uh, one way to call her a stalker, but, you know, you do you. But, but... that means the guy she spent all that time watching over is... I admit, I always did have my suspicions. And, uh, yeah. For those of you who thought that the reincarnation of Drykles might be Reen, might be Olivier. Nope. It's Osborne. It's been Osborne the whole time. Why, for instance, did Emperor Eugent go to such lengths to support the Chancellor? 
why did Aryan Road and Osborne have a perfect combat link the first time they fought together? <laughs> You're right. It all makes sense now. His Majesty had the entire truth in his hands this whole time. The Black Records. He knew that the Lionheart Emperor, founder of Thor's, father of the Renaissance, and victor in the War of the Lions 250 years back, had been reborn as Giliath Osborne, the Blood and Iron Chancellor. There's also the fact that uh, they got a new voice actor for the fourth game, because Peter Beckman did Osborne for the first three. So you're always going to have the sense that it sounds a little bit off. Yeah. I never imagined reincarnation would be possible. Paranormal bullcrap. Except it's for real this time, isn't it? Of all the things for the visions to show us. I mean, they seeded hints here and there, but nobody really thought that it was going to be Osborne. It's like, oh... Actually, nobody even thought, you know, reincarnation was on the table, considering this is the first time it's ever come up. Those witless fools! Why didn't Leanne and Dreykels come to me? Did you not say we were friends? Was it all just a lie? No. I am the one at fault. How could I have been so blind for centuries? Grandmother. Rose. <sighs> Roselia, what can you tell us about this Ishmelga? The Ebon Knight. <laughs> all signs point to him being the one behind all this, don't they? It radiates an aura unlike any other Divine Knight we've encountered. Exactly, Richie. I do not know. This particular Divine Knight has remained mostly hidden for over a thousand years. It was absent for both the War of the Lions 250 years ago, and the Dark Dragon's appearance 900 years ago. However... It may have been the one behind them. Or perhaps, the one behind every tragic event in Erebonia's dark history. No way. Valimar, Ordeen, and all the other Divine Knights we've seen thus far have each had their own conscious mind. What if that mind were to become warped by malice, amassing it as a kind of power? The Gnomes and the Hexen clan have been at odds from the very start. Even still, we managed to reach a compromise 1200 years ago. We stood side by side as we sealed off the Great One. We worked arm in arm to help found the Empire. But 800 years ago, after the reclamation of the capital, the gnomes suddenly broke off all contact with us. And the one behind all of that was the Ebon Knight. It must have taken over the gnomes and made them into its followers. Well, that's the nice way of putting it, I guess. In reality, they're nothing more than its brainwashed minions. And so they got involved with all sorts of shady stuff, including the boss's death, and moving their evil plans forward the whole time. Yeah, even now. That's the curse that Albrecht was talking about. But what's its end goal? Bringing back the Great One? Or is it trying to win the rivalry of the Seven to become the Great One itself? Is that what the Ozi units were created for? What I was created for? What Milliam gave her life for? <sighs> Just the thought of it makes me sick. We can't let this stand. Oh, Rena's pissed Rain? off now. That thing is the reason for all this suffering. Not only in Erebonia, but in every country surrounding it. Crow, the Lance Maiden, and the Jaeger King were all made into immortals and forced into its game. It took Milliam's life and the lives of so many others. Major Lecter's father. Major Claire's family, and others still, innocent people, all made into its victims. Elisa's father, George, my mother, even Chancellor Osborne himself. 
Reen, keep it together! At this rate, the curse will take hold of you. <laughs> it seems the truth was too much for him to handle. <laughs> Damn it! You gotta get it under control! Calm yourself, my Awakener. Thalmor? Oh, what is this? It feels so soothing. Valmar's got the Fanta. No. Uh, where are we? Is this the phase space where Divine Knights and Awakeners make their contracts? Nah. I get the feeling we're somewhere else entirely. Valmar. You can speak again? This is different from when we spoke back in the workshop. Isn't it? Correct. It seems the curse has temporarily loosened its grip on me. My means of expression remain limited, however. Perhaps I will recover the ability to speak in the real world at some point. I hope so. Thank the goddess. Hear my words, Awakener, and secondary contractors. The Ebon Knight is not the only one to blame for all the tragedies you made. Mankind's weakness contributed to bringing them about. If you fail to understand this, you have no hope of prevailing in the rivalries ahead. Even with the sword. Basically, quit making convenient excuses for everything that's gone wrong in your life. The sword? Everything's sort of all right now. Milliam! I'm not sorry. Milliam! <laughs> hey guys! Did you miss me? I've been watching over you guys the whole time. Every time you got in a pickle, and every time you whooped your way right out of it. Guess I should say sorry, though, for not being strong enough. I wanted to be able to say, I saved the day, that I helped protect everyone. But I never thought I'd cause you guys all this grief instead. Milliam. You don't have to apologize. Not in the slightest. You did more for us than we ever could have asked. I'm guessing the two of you appeared to tell us something important. Am I right? Yeah. Being stuck like this helped us finally figure a few things out. First off, you were right about the rivalries being struggles for power between the Divine Knights. Crow's an immortal, so he should have totally vanished from our world after he was defeated. But it seems like you guys figured it out. Making him your kin like that bought him some more time. Though, when it comes to the end of the Great Twilight, um, I probably don't even need to say it. <laughs> That's me. Living with the death sentence over my head. Crow! <laughs> there is one more thing to mention regarding the Ebon Knight. His power is immense. Beyond the reach or understanding of this realm, he could defeat every one of us. However, this would not make him whole again. He requires a worthy opponent. As such, I expect the following will occur. The Ebon Knight will wait until one knight has absorbed the power of the other five in order to have his worthy opponent. However, because this opponent has such power, it is at this point Ishmelga could potentially be defeated. The Jaeger King's Palatinate Knight. The Steel Maiden's Argent Knight. The Prince's Vermilion Knight. Rufus's Arg Knight. And Reen's Ashen Knight, partnered with Crow's Azure Knight. It'll be one of them who'll be going toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Ebon Knight. 
How about it, Reen? Looks like we don't have much of a choice. Your rivalry at the Soul Shrine was only a preview of what's to come. Maybe we can convince the boss to join us, just like Crow. Perhaps. And from what we saw in those visions, there could certainly remain a chance to recruit the Steel Maiden to our side as well. That's right. They of all people should understand what it is we're fighting for. We can make it work. I'm sure of it. Ain't gonna be easy, but... At least now we finally got some light at the end of this tunnel. Maybe so. But I somehow doubt Rufus or the Prince will be half as eager to team up with us. That's okay, we just have to beat the shit out of them. So long as Valimar can win the rivalries and absorb the power of their knights, it shouldn't pose too much of a problem. With more allies and more power, we might actually have a shot against Chancellor Osborne. Our odds may be slim, but this is our best chance to defeat Ishmelga for good. I've made my decision, Valimar. Not as the sacrifice, and not as an ogre, but as myself. We're going to see these rivalries through to the very end, with you and Milium at our side. Well said, my Awakener. That's what I like to hear! I'll be right there with you all the way! Milium! Stop! Don't go! Please, wait! There's still so much I have to say! Come on, guys! You don't have to worry! Even if you can't see me, I'm always with you! Remember, we're all a team, no matter what happens! Listen, Ruger, if you don't join us, your daughter will be put into danger. He's gonna be put into danger, huh? Well, I'll join you guys. Oh, that wasn't just a dream, was it? Anyway, this, these scenes no. were really good. It wasn't. Millions with us, in spirit at least. <sighs> now I see. She was never gone. She's been here all along. My big sister. I'm so glad. She's come such a long way. I can hardly believe it. What exactly was that, grandmother? A liminal space between dreams and reality, bestowed unto you by the spectral moon mirror. Something similar happened back when I inherited my predecessor's responsibilities. The mirror has granted us more than expected. All those centuries of watching over it were well worth it. Yeah, they really were. Rosalia? Yeah. And Emma? Definitely. And Celine as well. Thank you. For everything. You could pass that on to Vita and the Rakshasa, too. Props for all the help. Without any condescension, at least, yeah. Valimar has fallen silent once more. And it's unlikely Milium will be able to speak to us like that again. Yet, their souls are still with us, always. Of that, we can be certain. Indeed. Now that we're all together again, there can be no more room for doubt in our path as Class 7. And as members of the Radiant Wings. Probably would have been screwed without you witches helping out, though. Guess that's worth a thanks or two. Definitely. I think I'm finally ready to face my father and Sharon again. Yeah, we owe you guys. Big time. You guys. You're making way too big a deal over it. I didn't do anything. But I guess... I'm glad things worked out. Ah... It feels as though several centuries of weight has been lifted from my shoulders. That's because your boobs shrunk again. As for the new facts that were revealed to us, I will let Vita and Thomas Lysander know what they should. That'd be a great help. Thank you. I'm just happy I was able to carry out my duty as a wandering witch. But I couldn't have done it if our family hadn't worked so hard to protect this sacred place. So thank you, Grandmother for guiding our clan for so many years. And, more than anything, for making me the person I am today. Aww. Just, where's all this coming from? What do you think you're doing? Are you trying to bring your poor granny to tears? This old heart of mine can only take so many surprises. <laughs> My word. Yeah, probably. 
I'm gonna be turned into cat food. It would seem our little trip can be counted as a success. We should bring the good news back to His Highness and the others. Right. Best not to keep them waiting any longer. Let's be off. To the Courageous Two. So yeah, that's uh, probably a good stopping point for today. Uh, yeah, some really, really emotional scenes. Uh, this is where Cold Steel 4 really finds its footing after the second act kind of dragged for a bit. Everything from here on is pretty fast-paced and, you know, full of emotional moments like these. So, I hope you're all looking forward to what comes next, because... I certainly can't wait to see how it plays out in English. I thought the voice actors did an amazing job with these scenes. <laughs> in any case, uh, thank you all for coming. I hope you enjoyed. My name is Logic Blade. I stream on Twitch, and I port all my videos to YouTube, so you can find me at either place. If you'd like to help support the channel, feel free to comment, subscribe, bell icon. Y y you know what to do. Do those things that help the algorithms out. Gets me more attention and, you know... All that fun stuff. If you're interested in supporting me even more, feel free to check out my fan fictions at Archive of Our Own, or toss a dollar or two to my Patreon. You know, if you want to. I'm not going to force you to do anything you don't want to do. In any case, have a good night, everyone, and we'll see you next time for uh, the continuation of Act 3. Until then, take care, stay safe, and uh, be sure to beverage responsibly. <laughs>